Yeah, no, we're doing it. We're doing it now. Now that I'm enforcing the cold opens. Yeah, enforced. Not that I, I to... know whether or not the thing has worked, because I haven't released that episode yet, because it didn't finish uploading until 4 a.m. So much. Yeah, I'm a little bit more leery about uploading things now that I know my computer dies at random ass fucking moments. I'm like, mm. yeah, that's a pain. That's a that's a that's a pain. Also, I got to apologize. I have preemptively cracked a can because I am dumb. I literally had a thirst and I was like, all right, I'm going to save this can for the opening because that's how I do. Let me drink the soda. I look away and just mentally grab my fucking can and crack it open. I'm like, God damn it. Damn you, muscle memory. But all right. Okay. Well, it's been about 45 seconds. So uh, we'll go ahead and say that this is What's Up. And uh, this episode brought to you by our patrons like uh, Go Comics, Qua, Jeremy Vasquez, Kai Den, Nestor Flores, Sodazone 0424, and Video Gamer 75. <sighs> Yawn suddenly crept up on me in the middle of that. Anyway, uh, if you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to our episodes early and lots of other goodies, and it would really help us out, and we appreciate all your support. Thank you. I tried <laughs> doing it with my mouth. Uh, well, I enjoyed it. I don't know how it turns out on audio. I might have to listen to it later. I'll see if I remember where it is, and I'll clip it. <laughs> All, right. All right, but it's another week. We are now like in the mid- middle of October. Things are cooling down, but we here at Studio Media, we're always heating up. Yes, perfect. Dramatic thump. <laughs> well, I'm right now I'm heating up because I've realized that I should, as opposed to staring at a story chapter of Shimosa I can't read, I should do more graph speed runs. Uh, solid. Uh, so I guess last night, I, last night I made sure to get some, get a couple of reps in on on SP3. So time to just go whole hog. Hey, guess what? When you have grossly over leveled teams, well, not grossly because I'm I'm not like everybody 120 yet. But when you have fleets made of multiple units who are all the same faction and are really good in the meta and are over level 100, uh, events are easy, yo. Well, at least base events. Yeah, well, I don't really, I don't really play a lot of like EX mode stuff or hard mode maps, mostly because I don't see the point in it. Just yeah, you can do most things by playing regularly or just doing them because, um, what you call it, RNG. Yeah, like I know that hard mode maps help you in most events. Usually help you climb points ladders better. Uh, they still usually they require higher level units. They cost more oil to start and stuff. So it kind of becomes a counterbalance thing because if you're trying to do RNG drops then you want the lowest amount of cost as fast as you can do them. Yeah. That said, I think the Grafspe style event is the one of AL I like the least, where it's like, okay, so not only do you have to do all the story maps normally, but then you have to do the final map literally over and over again constantly until you get enough in, right? Like, it's not like you're not working towards a set point goal. It's just, hey, can you literally do this map over and over again? Yeah... Like the, but, well, just really quick, the other style of events where there's like, you have to get point drops, usually every map has like a first time a day times three modifier, so yeah. you're encouraged to do multiple maps if you really want to get your good farm on. You know, spread out the variety. I can, like, honestly, I'm going to play Devil's Advocate a little bit here, because, um, well, they do say, well, they do, um, um, I said, well, it is a bit of a pain. It also does mean that there is a way to get a guaranteed drop of a limited ship. Um, because uh, if I remember, uh, Grassbury is in the event construction, but um, <laughs> um, just a couple days ago they uh, dropped that they're doing Return of the War God, which has um S R Mikasa. Yeah, and Mikasa and Hie are gonna be in. Yeah, and so some <laughs> people are looking at their cubes, cubes like mm, I don't want to throw. No, and with I need the these mi- cubes. Yeah, and with a mini event, I don't know. Some people like. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's just because the graph speed one goes by very fast. It does. I think I I don't think most so much my issue is the amount of times it's like running per se. It's how little you have, how little time you have to do them. Yeah, you you yeah. really got to be like, oh shit, I have to do this. Yeah, you have to like do like uh, I almost like it only lasts what, like a week, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that means you have to do a minimum at least like ten a well, not minimum, but ten a day. So it's just like. Uh, mm, well, luckily, I have managed to magically, thanks to maintenance and stuff, overfill my oil once again. I was I was getting a little down doing raids for killing enemies to get Jamaica skin, which I did do. Solid! Uh, so I will, I don't know, I can just plug something in and throw this on. 
I need to find something good to binge, though. I don't know. Um, pfft. I'll I'll figure oh. out something on TV. Unfortunately, I already killed Fucking the new season binge. of Big Mouth. Princess Principal. But I can't with my phone. Lucky, I need to read. Oh, that's right. My 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 mediocre Japanese is not good enough to look away from a screen. Um. Like even if I'm watching on TV, it's too hard. And this is the one thing I still have a criticism about AL. I'm doing it right now. I've just finished a map. There are so many clicks to get through. You have to like accept the screen rewards, etc. And it's like. There's a bog down moment where I have to look down at my phone, tap through several times. Like, I think, I don't know, FGO is the same amount, but at least for all of those, they're tap anywhere. Whereas mm-hmm. AL has speci- several specific buttons you have to tap to continue. So it it requires me to look and be like, am I actually pressing the thing? And maybe it's just my, my tiny greasy thumbs, but sometimes the press don't go good. So it's like, oh shit, I've wasted like a whole minute or two not moving on to the next map. So I don't know, it's... It's hard for me to do, even with autoplay, it's hard for me to do AL when fully distracted. Like, when we're talking, it's pretty easy for me to glance down and tap it a couple times. Like, God forbid, like I said, I couldn't do Shimosa right now, because I'd have to read, which is not something I'm great at doing at the same time as talking. I can't write or talk and also read competently. One of those things has to be sucky. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to say away, but, like, I can I can do stream of consciousness, conscience, consciousness excuse me, pretty well. But if you actually want me to actually think about what I'm saying, like everything else I'm doing just kind of slows down. You actually see this a lot when I'm actually streaming. If I'm actually like talking about something serious, I will literally just wander in a circle in game. Um, actually, Omega, you pointed this out during some Nautica play through how I was literally like talking like really fast and really intently and I was just pacing back and forth in Subnautica. Yeah, you started talking about something completely unrelated and just, I was like, you're totally machinimating this dude. You're just walking back and forth. Obviously, as you're talking, you're, you know, moving your mouse yeah. hand, bobbing your head up yeah. and down, and like, this is, this is great. Because <laughs> it, it adds a sense of motion to the audience, because... Yeah. Though it's funny, you also go the other way, other way in Subnautica, when you're doing base stuff, you just get really quiet and focused, and are just quietly shuffling through menus, you know, grabbing, like, a handful of titanium, thrown in your pocket, going to the next locker, etc. Well, it's yeah, really that's interesting. That's, well, as I said, that's because, um, interior, anal retentive interior decorator Lucky is in full fucking swing. Keep so I guess we started our day by talking about Azure Lane. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me see. Is there anything else? Oh, I, I, something I want to talk about. Um, I have a sense of accomplishment. I finally got my first level 120 sip, ship. Nice. It is, mom, it is Mama Graph. Nice. I should probably um, double check if I can. I can probably break a few of these. That's funny. Break a few. I can, I can probably, uh, whatever they call it. Un- Awakening. Your li- Awakening. That's right. Awaken some ships. I don't ever, I don't ever think about it, so I forget but it takes a long time it's a lot of that's a really big accomplishment getting to 120 because it takes a lot of exp also the good thing about awakening is even after you hit that cap they still accum- accumulate um xp yeah it's so. good it's it's stockpiled because they're like oh you might not have your your uh yeah so not core data which is it that's another problem uh, with al sometimes it has too much shit in it and i'm like i know i know the thing you're talking about it's the damn awakening unit it's the thing. blue chips not the black chips i don't know everybody should know what i'm talking about it's just like there's so many names for things yeah um let's see following um mama graph though is prince um Uygen at 119 and then i have tear pits and bismarck both at 118 so well, not too far behind. prince is pretty pretty on point because i posted oh, yeah. in anime manga something i'm like we really need we really need that zone of danger emote. Uh, yeah. Uh, because because... As Prince uh, showed up in Ashley episode two, and she is nothing but uh, zone of danger. Ah, uh, yes. All, all of the enemy ships are just danger zone. <laughs> like, I remember the first episode, everybody was talking about Kaga's thighs. You know, there's, there's other stuff to talk about in the second episode. But, yeah, she shows up with a real powerful... Also, while it's a little weird... That they're CG ish. I do love that they separately animated her little dragon head ship bows. Like uh, they just, the yeah, apparently, like iron just blood out rigging there is actually alive. It's well, it makes crazy. sense because they talk about how they're using their technology based on the sirens. So they've got like freaky alien robot dragon parts, and I'm like, yeah, this is good. <laughs> I like how they ate the dongo. I was all like, apparently they eat too. Nom 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 nom. Ah uh, yes. Um, Iron Blood for Life. Okay, we get, a couple, like, we get some. Uh, well, they they drop some some quote references in the episode because mm-hmm. uh, as I so my mind really wants to say like sorty and 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 flutie, but I also want it to rhyme, so I'm always like flutie and scooty. Poor Zuikaku. 
But they show up and continue to show us that Sakura ships are just fucking magic. Like, um, Shokaku just floats. Why? I don't know. She's a bird, and she has a flute. I guess she can fly. Though, uh, Prince also just floats, because it's cool, I guess. I don't know. I, don't know. I did like the effect that, um, Shokaku, where she just hit the hilt of her sword on her... Yeah, her, her much like Enterprise with her bow, Zuikaku's main form of attack is her sword. So her runway rigging is just a sword sheath. Yeah. And she hit the hilt on it, and, like, the sword just, like, powered up this, her plane just powered up the sword. Yeah. I was like, that was cool. Yeah, they've done, I I, I don't know if, because I haven't looked at a lot of gameplay, but technically there is a console game out for Azure Lane, so I don't, I don't know if the animators, like, looked at that for direction. I don't know if that's as, if that's as crazy as the anime is sometime, or if it's much more gameplay inspired, but the anime choreographers have really, they're really trying their best, considering oh, yeah. this is a... I don't know. I I wouldn't call it necessarily blatant, but it's a it's a, a fan service cash grab anime. It's like, hey, look at this super popular anime about ship girls. Let's draw them in motion. And like I said, they're they're not sure shy about the fan service. There was yet yeah, another but- Sandy cameo, and I was like, leave it. <laughs> well, yeah, they're actually showing the aftermath of the attack, and they're fishing girls out. And, also, yes, you know. the fucking the fucking peep guys, the manjus are just they're the support crew. And I'm just like, this is adorable. They literally throw a fishing line to hook Sandy. Yeah, and Sandy's I'm like, oh just, my uh, I'm like, oh, Sandy's upside down in the water. I'm like, is it? Is that Sandy? They throw it and she flips over and I'm just like, yeah, it is. And I just, I posted a screen cap and I was like, leave it. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah, yeah there's, a, but... there's a lot of subtle stuff. Um, we get to see debate? another group of fighters in this. So uh, Hornet and was it Arizona? I was it was Hornet, Arizona, Hammond, and... Um, Long Island. Yeah, Long Island is there. I think there's one more cruiser, but I don't remember which one it was. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Oh, it was, uh, was it, was it Helena? It, yes, it was Helena. Yeah, because she did a radar thing, and she was like, oh shit, the enemy's here. Yeah. Even though the and enemy Hel- is two giant aircraft carriers, how could we have not have noticed this? I don't uh, know, yeah. it's just like ambushes in game, they just show up out of fucking nowhere. Surprise, emergency. Uh, Haman is yeah. uh, amazing, I love her. There usual. was a, there was a lot of Haman. First of all, she talks in the third person. And she actually does. And then then when she's, after like five minutes of fighting, she's disabled. She's just laying face down in the water. Going, blah, 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 blah. I do appreciate that. Well, even though um, Yorktown has not made an appearance for reasons. Um, yeah, in the, I think it's in the OP or was it in the, the beginning? Of, uh, Yorktown is like bedridden like she's sickly. Yeah. But they're being kind, and they're not like saying, "Oh yeah, no, these girls are actually destroyed." No, they're just no nobody. Nobody has been that seriously injured yet. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, Hood don't appeared know, but... off screen, but also we're not in the we're not in the North Atlantic, so it's not a problem unless Bismarck shows up. Yeah, but um, I do like how they like they do show damage. Like fucking Enterprise got hella fucked up. Well, Enterprise got. Enterprise channeled her namesake because that was the that's why it's called the Grey Ghost because the Japanese thought they sucked that fucking carrier and we were like no you didn't <laughs> they're like it's a literal ghost ship holy shit because she is she's beat to hell her her real life runway is blown the fuck up and cratered and she's just like the enemy's still alive I must go uh and so and despite the fact that she's super damaged she's still kicking the shit out of Zuikaku. Though, shout out to the anime for actually showing them getting a confrontation. That's a, from the story events in-game, that's a big deal that Zuikaku never gets her fight against the Grey Ghost. Yeah. In-game. So that was cool that they actually put them together like that. Long yes, Island so- was also adorable. She's a ghost. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. And then the episode ends with Whales getting a call from, from QE. And there's lots of cameos there. I just, I just love how uh, it was. I think Sheffield holding the phone, and then I don't remember who was holding her scepter. But the two maids are just holding on to her shit. Oh She's god, it wasn't it wasn't call. Suffolk because Suffolk was at was at base. She got because she got fished out. I'm trying to remember all the damn maids. There's a lot of fucking. Th- there are two oh, themes. Edinburgh. There are two themes with the Royal Navy: maids and royals. It was probably Edinburgh then who was holding her staff. Oh yeah, that can make sense. It could have been Edinburgh. Uh, yeah, because... but yeah, there's a, there is a war, war spite and hood cameo, but they don't mm-hmm. talk yet. Yeah. Uh, They're but apparently tea. QE was sent everybody's favorite Belfast out first. And so she shows up at the end of the episode. 
Um, this is something I do appreciate because they actually do show this off in the game. As kind of bratty as uh, Queen Elizabeth is, she is the fucking head, and she is pretty goddamn smart when it comes. No, to she's acting. in charge, so there's yeah, a reason so why like, people listen to her. Yeah, so like she's like, oh yeah, I know, I totally already know what's happening. I've already sent someone. In. Yeah, that's I'm, that's the thing. I think the the Azure Lane factions show off Rel as their unity, whereas. Shokaku's joking about it, but she jokes to Zuikaku about, oh, poor us, we're bullied by our seniors. Oh, how sad, and Zuikaku's just like, oh my god, sis, can you take this seriously for like five seconds? Kaga's the same way, she's like, Akagi, can you calm your tits for like five minutes? <laughs> Only, she's not that annoyed because uh, Kaga is dead inside, but still. <laughs> well, like, also, there, you also there's a you lot also... of these weird tensions between like the, the Sakura and even some of the Iron Blood ships. Well, like when when um, Prince shows up, there is definitely uh, tension in the air as they snip and snipe at each other. So it's just like mm. just just imagine, you know, armored dragon necks clacking in the background, and then they shoot they shoot guns. <laughs> Bang! Prince says fire later, or yeah. rather foyer. Yeah. Like I said, they 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 make sure to work in their references. They work in some skill quotes. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think they were one-to-one, but Zuikaku says some stuff that are, like, a lot of her in-battle lines mm-hmm. in the anime. It, I, f- I feel kind of I feel kind of bad, though, for, for the, the, the Beta Eagle team. They were completely swamped by a, just two carriers until Enterprise showed up. Like, yeah. it's a sma- it's a, almost a literal smash cut. It's just like, oh, shit, they're being attacked. And Haman's all like, we can take them. Hammond, hey, no, you cannot take them. <laughs> it was at that point they knew. They're fucked up. As this, like, the smash cut is literally Tahamad lying face first in the water going, oh, blah, 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 blah. You know, uh, uh, still- Long Island is down. Uh, uh, Helena and, and Arizona are, like, beat up supporting each other. Hornet's the only one still fighting, and she is forced to just dodge. Smooth moves, though, Hornet. Smooth moves. Good speed. You just need to get yourself a real weapon, apparently, is your problem. You're, she only had her, she only has her flight deck. So. She doesn't uh, have cl- any fucking special moves, I guess. Uh, clearly, um, we are going by the um, the old anime image. Less clothes you wear, the better you can dodge. Yeah, but still, that was, it, it. It was a good episode. I liked it a lot. I'm I'm interested in seeing more. Like they've they do a pretty good job of building everybody up. Fucking Laffy continues to be a nonstop riot. <laughs> Acc- accidentally exposes uh, a javelin. Javelin. And then herself, she don't even care. She's like, I'm tired. And she's just like, I need to fuck. She, she's not, she doesn't swear, but she's like, I need to drink. Pops open her oxycola and just... I, uh, say, I carp and save that, by the way. It's in Gotcha Games. Yeah. I need a drink, just in case. Because yeah. it's, it's, it's just a great symbolism. And then she steps when... uh when Because uh, Z23 actually shows up in this one, too. Yep. Uh, but when the, when the Iron Blood shows up, Laffy steps up and she's like, I'm going to fight you. No, wait. I'm too tired. Well, she says that because I'm pretty sure she... Laffy's just like, oh, here comes fucking the maid. I don't have to do shit. Well, yeah, she's like, uh, okay, never mind. We're saved. Because she actually has that conversation with Enterprise where she's like, uh, Laffy doesn't like to work hard, but if my, if people are bothering my friends, then I guess I got to put in extra effort. So she starts like, ah, oh, now I got to take, you know, now I got to take my kid gloves off, which actually is pretty interesting because her... Her in-game skill is to increase her attack power. Oh, yeah. So, which I think, doesn't she actually say something like, you know, restraints lifted or something? Yep. Yeah, so she could, hopefully we'll see that at some point, but she could go a bit more all out, but she doesn't because she's sleepy. She's a sleepy baby. She's a sleepy girl. She's a sleepy lush. (laughs) Which is, it's very funny considering that at least in the anime, they just show her drinking the, the Oxico- oxygen Oxico- colas, which should be a sugary soda, but she's sleepy all the time, which is what alcohol does. Yeah. Because in case... Sorry, I leaned over to throw a tissue away. Because in case you didn't know, alcohol is depressant. So it yeah. makes you... It lowers your system, and so it makes you more relaxed, but ultimately more sleepy. I wonder if it's like using oxycola just so the fact that they're like, okay, we don't have to look like this miner is drinking alcohol or something. Probably. They probably decided like, uh, we don't, we don't want to show her chugging back the sake bottles just yet. Yet. Yeah. But, um, is there anything else about Azure? Well, actually, no, I was actually going to pivot on this because we're talking about, you know, like fan service gotcha games. 
Um, we're not going to fully talk about it, but... Well, that's fucking, good, because I haven't actually watched it yet. Yeah, but um, Babylonia still continues to be amazing. Uh, yeah, I've seen some shots. Got, People say the OP is really good. Oh, no, the OP is fucking amazing. And I'm just all like, they really went all in on this fucking gotcha game. Man. Yeah, we literally, uh, we said that yesterday before the episode came out when we were like, man, they really, they're pulling out the stops. I'm like, hopefully they didn't blow their whole budget. No, I guess not. Nope. They just did Sony write a blank check? I mean, it's entirely possible. You could these big budget companies. You could see them doing that, where they're just like, yeah. just you know. Uh, we talked about that with like Rage of Bahamut anime, where where apparently the the studio behind it, CY Games, when the anime studio was was asking them, okay, how how much money you want to put in this project, and they're just like, whatever it takes. Well, CY Games usually has pretty good stuff when they fund it. Well, yeah, but that that's because they have loads of money to spend. And Thanks, Grand Blue Fantasy and Shadowverse. So, like, I that's why I like, with Azure Lane, I don't want to say it's, like, it's not quite a cash grab, per se. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely a very obvious, uh, you know, tie-in for, uh, well, if I want to critically analyze it, so it's a tie-in for fans. It gives fans who like the game something to be excited about because you get to see these characters in motion, in action. Mm -hmm. You get to see some setups and some jokes that are, you know, uh, enhance you the games. Goddamn lore. Yeah, you get to enhance the lore and all that stuff. And also, like I said, you get to see, you know, like Zuikaku gets her fight against Enterprise. That's cool. Stuff like that. Mm. And for people who aren't fans, just the general anime watching public, it's like, hey, here's all of our character roster for our gacha game. Check this shit out. So you're like, do you like these designs? Like, so far, I think all the characters shown are permanent. Wait, no. Well, actually, yeah, by the time this anime's come out, aren't, isn't, because Zuikaku is available through War Archives, and they think they're eventually planning on adding Shokaku to construction. Uh, I think so. I'm trying to think. I think uh, it's planned, even if it's not outright yet. Because you can get Zuikaku via drops now through the War Archives. So Yeah, hang on, I'm thinking. I don't think anybody is limited that's been shown so far then. So it's like... No. They're, they're showcasing their permanent roster right now, is their up front and center. And then, like, I can imagine later that they might, like... Especially if they end up doing multiple seasons, I could see a a uh, Winter's Crown type thing. But they might tease some of their more advanced ships, you know, uh, like like Bismarck has a cameo or has an appearance in an arc, etc. Uh, Graf could show up because Graf was Graf was just construction. Was she actually in the story anywhere? I don't remember. I don't think. I so. believe so. I'm pretty sure we're going to be getting the Divergent Chessboard re event here pretty damn soon. So, actually, I can, we can look in the fucking memories. That's the thing. Uh, I'll do it later. I'm busy yeah. shooting down ships. Super important. Um, Let's see. I have not touched Girls Frontline in a couple weeks. I'm not going to lie. Hey, it's nothing to do. There's, it's a point ladder event. I'm I'm making sure to pop in every day and do as much as I can. But eh. Is it a point ladder event or now is it a oh, fucking... It's a lotto. That's right. Okay, Check it's a lotto. Okay. It's okay, the, so the it's, if it's switched, I was like, oh, wait, I have to actually check in. No. Uh, they did release Chapter 10. Mm. I believe they actually... Yeah, they actually... No, it's a, Chapter 10 is now available. So they, there is more story content, but I'm... That's that's permanent. That's not a priority for me. Yeah. I'm still not caught up, so it's like, I'll get to this someday when other things are less less pulling on me. All right. <sighs> I feel a little sleepy, but that's okay. How long have we been going? We'll talk about Azure Lane for like 20 minutes. Sounds about right. Yep. Uh, but yeah, there's not much else to talk about. There's the the Grafsby mini event is going on right now, but they've already you know alluded to. Excuse me, what's coming next? So that's good. We don't we don't talk about FGO on this show. This the whole reason why this show exists is because we talked about FGO too much. And we need <laughs> a whole other show to contain literally everything else we talk about. Contain. Oh, uh, uh, let's go. Let's go a little bit about um, anime. Actually, because actually, um, I saw an anime because, well, actually, let me mention this. I guess we'll, we'll, I'll pivot to this. Um, I did actually pick up the free trial of Funimation now. Mm -hmm. And at, and um, right now, like, it has, um, like all things in life, it has some pluses and some minuses. Um, like, um, I'm, in, I'm using it on my PS4 because that's how lucky do, because it's easier for me to multitask on a PS4 and a computer than to multitask multiple things on my computer. Usually one thing starts edging out over another. And the interface on the PS4 for Funimation is... I was I want to say a little bit, it's at the same time better and worse than Crunchyroll. 
like they have abilities just to like switch the default language to like English or Japanese that let you just start off on like whatever season movie extras. Um, but like they don't seem to have uh, like abilities to easily pick up like um, where you left off. Like when you go to like your queue, it just gives you the anime, not like where what episode you were in the anime. So you have to actually go into it and navigate it. Whereas in Crunchyroll, you just open up your queue and you're just on the last episode you were. There's a lot of fiddly bits in Funimation now. Uh, and I, honestly, I don't know. That might just be a, a an issue with the PS4 because, like, I've used YouTube a whole shitload on my PS4. It's mm. the PS4 version's not as clean as like uh, navigating around in other versions are. Like, well, yeah, you know, well, sometimes sometimes computer, menus are uh, nested, and you know you have to like find stuff like yeah. tracking down a specific. Resuming a playlist you were playing, for instance, is not automatic. You have to, like, go into the video that's in your history and do it, whereas on mobile or desktop, usually YouTube is like, oh, you were wa- literally watching a playlist. Here, pop this back open. Yeah, no, I'm comparing I'm comparing um, PS4. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying, backwards. I'm wondering if that might be a PS4. Well, you don't have the, you don't have the access of a mouse and a keyboard. Yeah. So. I'm just wondering if there's some limitations to yeah. the overall, like, PS4. Whatever. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if I did, if I watched it on my um, computer, it'd be a lot smoother but that's not how lucky do. although i did one point i did actually figure out how to hook up my 40 inch up to my computer so i can go with three screens and i'm just all like this is too much power so um i said like right now i can't be sure like i haven't actually gone for blow for blow i can't tell which um platform crunch world formation actually has more but I do definitely know that Funimation has their own unique titles, this core, and, you know, that's kind of enough for me at the moment. So I've been picking up a couple things. Um, Actually, one of the animes I actually want to, again, I need to sell a mega on, is one that's called None, No Gun Life. It's basically a hard-boiled detective sci-fi, like, and at all the fucking beats. Well, cool. uh, Don't give me too much stuff to watch, though. I've already got a busy plate. i got to find time in my schedule. This is only the second thing I recommended. That's fair, but also we already have I already have excellent stuff. Yeah, but um well No Guns Life, um basically you you know, it's the fucking it's actually a cyberpunk future. There's like rampant human modifications. And if you modify if you uh, modify yourself too much, you become an overextended and you become you either a criminal or you have to get a license from the from the government. And there's this guy who has a literal gun for a head like like where his eyes are is just like a revolver and then he has like you know um a kind of a maw you know like with sharp pointed teeth for his mouth and he's a fucking um regulator he's kind of a private eye you know who goes around you know fixing problems like um <laughs> and he says he says some fucking hard boiled detective shit like right off the bat because like he gets a call he kicks some thugs out of you know a a bar he knows where you know the lady bartender you know tries to grab the trigger on his head it's all like don't tr- the, don't touch that trigger the only people that can touch that trigger are people that I accept it and I don't plan to accept anybody and the and the woman's just all like oh but it looks like you're like wandering around looking for someone to accept he's just like Mph. and then she's like offers him to come inside like for a drink on the house and he's all like don't do it the cigarette's all I need Alcohol and women make a woman go mad, and I'm make a man go mad. I'm just like, oh my god, this guy's so hard boiled. That's pretty funny. All right, <laughs> no gun life. Okay, I'll try and keep that in mind. Yeah, but as I said, it looks like it looks it looks pretty damn interesting. And this is also because he actually has um this weird like he seems like a, such a hard boiled guy, but anytime he sees like ample tits or like the bartender question just like gave him a kiss on the cheek, he's just like he was just like immediate blush, and this is like. Oh my god, he's oh, not that's, a that's very classic. That reminds me of many, many years of uh, Harry Dresden. Yeah. You know, Axel Tarp is actually like kind of a softy, and so I'm all like, yes, this is actually real good. I wasn't no, was I expecting when I watched it, but I'm like, I'm sold on it. It's also right, a really what, good what animation. What platform is it on? Uh, Funimation now. Okay. All right. Well, then that'll just incentivize me to get set up with the trial. Because yeah. uh, <laughs> there's another show that's just started back this, this week in this season. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, well, I'll be honest. the The episode is a comeback episode. It's a little disappointing, but also, it's been what a year, year and a half since My Hero was on the air. Mm-hmm. So it's fair. It's a fair. 
they have a huge cast, so the 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 recaps aren't completely out of line. But mm-hmm. it is a little it is a little weak. But I know that this arc is very good, so I'm like, eh, I'll suck it up for one more week. Uh, and if you weren't like me and were skimming your favorite moments from the series leading up to this very second, you it gives you a decent recap of some of the big moments. It mm-hmm. starts the actual episode itself proper starts with a replay of United States of Smash, which is always a great moment. But yeah, yeah we're is. talking about Boku no Hero Academia, aka My Hero. You know, whichever whichever one you prefer, you can in fact do it. Um, mm-hmm. and actually, I believe I don't know much about it, but I believe there's a spinoff focused on the female characters, which uses a different pronoun. So, really, uh, I just heard about. it. I was reading TV trips to try and recap. Is it? Oh, I didn't know that. I That's will cool. double check which name it is. I think it's Watashi no Hero Academia, but I'll check. Uh, which is which would be important because that means that in English they're both technically my hero, which could get confusing. <laughs> Let me deal with I said the only spinoff I know is the illegals, which is the vigilant. Yeah, I need to AP. read that sometime. I believe that's only a, that's only a, a manga for now. I need to figure out where's a good. That's only to manga, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's open up a little bit easier. Is it under franchise? Or is franchise re? No, franchise doesn't redirect. So, okay, yeah, it's called. Uh, it's they say it as my heroine academia translated, but it's a it's a young come a slice of life, but it's Watashi no Hero. So I don't know. It might it might not be collated anymore easily accessible, but still they they do technically do that. So it's it's the heroine thing works, but that's it's funny because that's actually while it is more feminine, Watashi is technically a gender neutral pronoun. That's what they yep. first teach you to say when you're learning mm-hmm. Japanese because mm-hmm. it's the most neutral I. But still, yeah. So, uh, but it's back, which is great because it's a it's a really good show. Like I said, I literally rewatched some of my favorite episodes leading up to this. And man, those moments, they still, they still land. They still slap. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I'm trying to think. What are, what are, you know, there's a lot of really big moments. The first time you get to see All Might go beyond in the end of the original, the short first, first core. You know, the, the whole USJ arc is a really good, powerful thing. The sports, the animation in, uh, Midoriya versus Todoroki are still great. Uh, and the pacing is just so perfect. You know, all the various trials, the aforementioned United United States of Smash. It's really good, though. I Now that I'm looking back at it, man, that last that last season, since I just double checked those last couple of episodes, that 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 feels really, really fast paced, considering it ends right away. It's it's very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. I guess they wanted to make sure to get all the setup out of the way so they could jump right to the plot in this season. Yeah, like as a, like I'm pretty sure they've already cleared like two cores, but there's a lot of shit that's about to go down. Yes, I do, and I don't know how how many arcs they're covering, but there yeah. are there's hopefully they do both because I know that this is kind of how my my hero handles pacing. It does ups and downs. Like you have really high tension, serious business arcs, and then you usually have even if it's just a couple of of chapters or episodes, you will have other arcs which are kind of breathers to like help characters work on their development, yeah, like, have a more relaxed scenario, kind of get character interactions in before you snap back to, holy shit, we're in a for serious superhero story. Yeah, as I said, like, my my hope is, like, they clear the school festival, because one of my mm-hmm. favorite villains is... Yeah, I really want to... Because I don't... I know some details because people talk about it everywhere, and sometimes you see images and mm-hmm. stuff from the manga, but I haven't actually... I've, I've restrained myself from just reading the manga, so mm-hmm. I know... Outlines, I know that what's, you know, certain characters that are upcoming, I know what certain arcs are because people always talk about them. I don't know any of the fine details, and obviously, like we said, the anime is beautifully animated. Like, Mm -hmm. fuck, considering that it's not even the, it's not even really the climax of this season, and it's a relatively small, short thing, the animation on that last fight between Deku and Bakugo is really good. When, when, uh, when, Izuku finally kicks it up to 8%. Oh, yeah. that That's just so smoothly and beautifully animated for no goddamn reason other than they could. Like, yeah, it's 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 always good to see some of this stuff. So it'll be, I think, I think it will be good if hopefully they do both those arcs because, like I said, the next one is going to be real serious. It's real serious. Well, and the School then, Festival arc is also, like, is com- comedic, but also gets serious. So I was all like, yes. But it's definitely lower stakes is the thing. Oh, like yeah. it lets you step back and relax a little bit. It's not, you know, the usual shit. Cause boy howdy, when you 
When you recap all the best moments of that series, you could also call it recapping all the times Deku horribly injured himself. Or a lot of buildings get really fucking destroyed. Goddamn buildings. Why does why does All for One <laughs> hate buildings so much? <laughs> so much property damage. Which is another thing that I... Uh, that's You, especially if you binge watch it, but you pick up on lots of little subtle things, but it's a big deal to the students. The students get taught a lot, hey, don't fucking cause collateral damage. Because there's yeah, people a- in those buildings. Like, that's a that's effectively a plot point multiple times. Mm-hmm. That collateral is bad. Like, you see oh, yeah. it as early as the first, the, the combat exercise, where uh, Izuku and Bakugo both basically lose points because they were causing a shitload of collateral. Because you shouldn't mm-hmm. do that. And they talk about that a lot. Like, um, I remember I was, you know, I'm slamming slam through these pretty quick. When the, in the, the year's final exams, when uh, Shoto and Momo are together, she's like, we're in a residential area, we can't go causing a lot of chaos. Even though it's a test, she's like, no, it's for reals. We can't fuck up these buildings. Well, that's the thing. You got to put, like, mm-hmm. you got to maintain that, that that kind of mentality at all times. Yeah, that's, so, like, I like a lot of these little subtle things. Right. Um, one of the big messages, I think, of, of My Hero is it's always important to do what you can now, mm-hmm. right? Like, that's that's kind of Izuku's defining crisis is he has to dis... He keeps beating himself up, and he gets more and more in danger, but he has to keep doing what he can, otherwise bad things would happen. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, I think it's a good interesting, because it has realistic consequences, but at the same time, the story doesn't paint him as wrong. Like, people are like, we gotta admonish you for doing dumb stuff, but also, you know, you're really saving people, so... And it- so, like, you did something wrong, but if you hadn't done, if you hadn't have done it... Things would have been worse, right? Uh, as as All Might likes to say, meddling when you don't need to is is the hero's job description. So, like, you didn't have to do those things some of those times, but because you did, that was a that was a net gain. So it's like I I like that they like show that his mentality has consequences, but also it's part of why he is a good hero. I think it's it's also good because like like through that there he also keeps taking steps to overcome. Right, All he's those, constantly like, learning, because that's what we see yeah. at the end of the last arc, is, is in, in the anime anyway, he develops shoot style, where he's like, I, uh, you know, All Might's all about punching people, so I just subconsciously punch people. Well, my arms are real fucked up, so I should learn how to use my powers with my legs. And he does, and he does pretty baller. That's the thing I, I like about how Midoriya's character starts. He, he is a Brainy Pants character, like, he... Oh, yeah is analytical, sometimes over-analytical, but he very strongly thinks about things, but he's also got the the right stuff, like, mentally to be a hero, which is why we like him so much, but he's not an well, idiot. Most characters aren't idiots, but, like, Bakugo has that a lot, where you think he's just a, a dumb fuck, but no, he's just really, really arrogant. He's actually super smart, but because he's so strong, he almost never has to use that effort. He can just blow people up. Yeah, when you when oh, you goodness. cram the entire series, Bakugo actually has a really interesting arc. I know a lot of people complain about him, but he's a very interesting character to study because he seems like he'd be a perfect fit for a villain. But then they do the subversion; they kidnap him, and he's like, "No, fuck you! I want to be a hero." And you're like, oh, "Gasp!" Uh, well, no, he's always been he's always been kind of that right. way. Like, like, but um, like see, thing he always like if you like. If you just, like, look more of his actions and not so much his fucking mouth, you totally see him, like, slowly becoming less, less of an asshole. He just always keeps right. that fucking, like, you know... Well, that, yeah, and that. it's funny, because in that fight I just mentioned, uh, in Midoriya's inner monologue, he says, he, I get I get mouthy when, I, when my desire to, to beat people takes off, because in my mind, the image of a winner is you, Bakugo. So, like, because Bak... That's, that's what I was going to say, it was... It was Actually, that is the core conflict of that fight, which is why I'm thinking of it is because that's at the tail end of an of an arc. So that's the yeah. that's what we just ended on, basically. Other than the uh, for the last couple episodes, we cram the big three in there because we we need to apparently this season to start out strong, and then we start with a weak ass recap episode. Anyway, mm-hmm. anime pacing. I don't know. These are the same people who stuck that weird filler episode in literally the middle of the license exams. Which I well, I understand that love. I believe that was a studio mandate or a or a network mandate. It's still really weird. Um, but they Deku and and Baku are both like we both admired All Might. He was the coolest. We admired mm. him for different reasons. 
Uh, Midoriya admires him because he always saves people with a smile, right? He's always helping people, and he does it with joy on his face. And that's that's the person he wants to be. He wants to be able to help people and, you know, just laugh it off and be like, ah, it's all fine now, because he had his whole horrible traumatic childhood and whatnot. Bakugo didn't have a traumatic childhood. He had the reverse. His childhood was too nice because mm-hmm. he was super awesome. And so his image of All Might is the guy who always wins. He's a hero because no matter what happens, he will always achieve victory and beat up those bad guys. And that's why everyone loves him. So he is so focused on, it doesn't matter if I'm a nice guy or an asshole guy, whatever. So long as I can beat the villains, I will be a hero. And that's the coolest. And then he constantly gets his ass kicked for it (laughs) all the time, which is, which is good because the boy needed character development, but still. Well, I said, like, uh, like, I'm sorry, I kind of spaced out a little bit. Did you mention how, like, um, how Deku was the reverse of that? Yeah. Okay. Like, they, they both, they both admire All Might, but they admired him for very different reasons. And yeah. that's why Bakugo fails the provisional license exam, because he's so focused on victory that he, do- he forgets about the other parts of being a hero and gets a terrible yeah. score. And we will see if, uh, cause there's like, I know that the big, the next big arc is the internships, the work study they've talked about. So oh, he yeah. can't do that. So I'm wondering how the anime will handle him taking his basically remedial classes, because hopefully that will be the good opportunity to showcase the fact that as a character he should get some growth out of failure. Oh yeah, no, there was actually um, there was actually a few chapters that in the manga, and it was actually pretty pretty cool. Um, you're gonna get fucking more Gang Orca, who's goddamn amazing. I love Gang Orca. He's only in the. He's only in the anime for such a short time at the end of the <laughs> arc, but it's great. Because when they get him in the flame tornado, he just pulls a fucking bottle of water. And just... Normally a villain would give up, but what if they didn't? What are you going to do now? Punk? And then then Deku comes in and kicks him, and he's just like, Ooh, that man, that would have been bad if the exam hadn't ended right there. Which I always thought is... Because is, that's the thing. As a character, Midoriya almost never thinks about his own growth. He's always about his own failures, you know, his own inadequacies, oh, yeah. which is yeah. that's part of his whole, like you said, traumatic childhood. But oh, yeah. There's lots of little subtle references, like in the fight with Bakugo, Bakugo suddenly realizes, like, holy shit, he's in a new gear, uh, you know, and Gang Orca is like, man, if that had kept going after me getting all dried out, that kid probably could have kicked my ass. Yeah. Now, he's wearing weights, which prevent him from going all out against literal school children, but still, that's saying something that, like... This was a guy they sent to the warehouse where All for One showed up. Like, he's he's a real deal pro hero. So the fact that if he was like, wow, in this training situation, I would have been in danger is saying something. That's usually people's response when they ru- when they run into to Izuku is like, man, this kid's really fucking strong. It's, <laughs> it's, it's too bad that it took him dozens of episodes to figure out how not to blow himself up all the time. <laughs> well, that's growth for you. Yeah. And this is definitely pace. Well, the pacing is, I think, better than some episodes. Like a lot of people compare it to other shonen, and like I was about to mention that that's that's the thing. Like they literally subvert Naruto the series because the villains kidnapped our edgy uh, supporting protagonist rival character, and then he was just like, "Yeah, fuck it, I'll become a villain" until literally the end of the of the series. And Baku was like, "No, fuck you. I don't want to be a villain. Why would I want that?" I'm I'm already accepted as part of society. Everybody thinks I'm cool. I'm not a loser, which is true. Unfortunately, a lot of the like I I some of the villain characters are very very complex. Like uh, what's his face twice. Ooh, that guy's backstory is ooh intense. But a lot of the time, some of these characters just come off as like losers. In fact, um, uh, Shirogaki Tomura is still a loser in the anime continuity. The whole point of his character growth is like, hey. Stop being such a fucking loser. I need you to be a for real villain. So it, it's very funny that, uh, that you know, Bakugo can explicitly call that out and be like, no, you guys are losers. You suck. Why would I join you? <laughs> and then he's like, I'll fucking fight eight of you in this bar. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's I'll still thinking like, I need to, dis- I only need to disable a couple of you and then run away. But. Oh, yeah, no, he's still, he's. It seems like he's, like, firing on, like, you know, on all attack, no defense. But no, he has a fucking plan. No, he's... That's the thing I just said. You think he's an idiot. He's just... He is smart. He's just headstrong. Abrasive. Uh Uh-huh. Very abrasive. Though he probably gets that from his 
mom. Unusually really hot, hot mother. Yes. We say unusually hot, but it's anime. Well, yeah, but also, I mean, not that Deku's mom isn't cute, but obviously you see her go from youthful to, I think she literally shrinks even though she can't be that old, but she gets, you know, a little bit less hot mom and a little bit more like, oh, that's a, that's a nice gentle motherly character in her character design. Mm -hmm. Whereas Bakugo's mom apparently looks the same as she always has because she gets glycerin sweat or whatever. Uh, little did we know that glycerin is actually good for your for your skin. Yeah. Also, that's a that's a very hilarious thing when you think about it. Bakugo's parents just happen to come together and have the nitroglycerin kid because I think his dad is the ability to secrete nitric acid and his mom secretes glycerin. Yep. So together they make the nitroglycerin kid. Oh, it's funny how that works out. There's a lot there's a lot of thought put into the whole superpowers and superpower genetics in this setting. Cuz like if you think about it, there are some characters who effectively have unmentioned or neutral quirks like um Tokiyami has a bird head. That's not his official quirk, but clearly one of his family members had the quirk to be a birdman and just because it doesn't give him any extra abilities, that's not what his quirk is called, but he still is a bird man. Well, it's like fucking, um, um, Suyo's family. Suyo's family all looks like fucking frogs, so clearly... Right. They're, they all come from a, from a long line of frog people. I think in, it's not shown somewhere, it might be in, I know there's a light novel uh, apparently out there that had some fun stuff, but apparently, um, Invisible Girl, uh, Hakakure's parents are both invisible people. Mm hmm Hilariously. Which, though, I could see that. That's like, like, I think I've mentioned before that, like, there's a, th there's a thing where, uh, romantically, uh, or, or relationship wise, like cops and nurses often end up together because they work similar hours and experience similar crisis. Yep. So it's like, you need somebody you can identify with. I could see how being invisible might give you a certain outlook on life that you need to share with somebody who is also invisible. And I don't, I don't know if they were like detailed, uh, they were like detailed how their invisibility works or like they both permanently invisible like Hagakure is. Mm -hmm. Cause, and actually, they don't, the anime so far hasn't really touched on it, but it does reveal that her actual ability is the ability to refract light constantly. So yeah. that has the passive ability of making her invisible, but also she can shoot light beams at people. Pew. She shows it off in the hero, the license exam. Well, they're always they're always figuring out new ways to um, mm -hmm. use their powers, right? Like that, and and um, all might even talked about that earlier that. When you when you get your quirk registered, sometimes your quirk isn't what people thought it was, so you get to change it a couple times, uh, because you know you can you can realize that your power is not to you know uh, like uh, control electricity. For instance, you might realize, oh, your power is to like suck up and store electricity and then release it. Oh no! Oh, sorry. What's up? Something just, happened. Uh, just, it's just something I saw. Um, this is gonna have to go in hell and not save for work. Oh my. Oh my. Well, you just retreated something that has to go in hell and save for work, so. Yeah, it did. Uh, but yeah, so, I really, I really, I don't know if we've, no, we must have talked about it a lot. Uh, you and I both have a long experience with supers as a genre. That's actually oh, yeah. how we met, technically. Yeah. Because that was playing, uh, Wild Talents, uh, which is a superhero RPG, and that was my metahuman renaissance setting, which was not quite as saturated as, my hero is. I think I was it one in ten? No, I think it was one percent. Yeah. One percent was the average metahuman rate. It was literally one in a hundred people. As opposed to uh four out of five in my hero. Uh but yeah, so we have a lot of experience like looking at the genre and uh and thinking about themes and characters and stuff, so I I really get excited thinking about it because it, well, I don't, th I don't think it's the second coming of Christ or anything. Like, I, mm. I have enjoyed traditional shonen. It's definitely an interesting and very Western-inspired style show, uh, and it really works a lot. And oh I like yeah, it. and like I said, I'm a little the the new episode did make me kind of sad because I'm like, oh, nothing happened. Yeah, but well, it is said. the first episode, so they got to set some mm. shit up. It's fine. Got to set some shit up. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Like I said, I literally don't know. Has it been a year and a half? One year? Two oh. years? I don't fucking know. It's been a long time. Yeah. Uh, but it's good, and we're going to see more good stuff. There's the uh, the OP's all right. I like it, okay? 
Uh, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it because I heard it was a recap and I, my mind just immediately just kind I of just went, like, yeah. eh. hey, 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 that's fair. Like, I don't know. Do you want some fucking slice of life shots? There's, I assume he's an anime original character, but there's a weird cam, a guy who is, who literally has the ability to create camera lenses. So he is a cameraman. Sounds like, yeah, sounds anime original. Uh, so he just, he shows up to do a piece about, um, cause this is post All, All Might's retirement. So he's like, All Might must have picked a successor. I correctly deciphered the secret message in that thing he said. I'm gonna make a scoop for the paper. Scoop is obviously in English. Uh, because I have not started my Funimation free trial and started checking out what the dub is like. That is that is something I want to do because people have always really praised the dub, and I know from like clips and stuff they're very good. Uh, like um, I think Sabat has said that his All Might is like his favorite role he's ever done. Like I said, like I kind of go up and down with the dub. Like at some points I'm like, yeah, this is pretty good, and sometimes I'm all like, eh. well, yeah, that can be. When you're familiar with the original and it's, you're also a little bit familiar with, like, say, Japanese language structure, you can mm-hmm. understand when something got lost. Like, yeah. um, Bakugo's dumb hero names in Japanese are puns. They sound similar to his name, and you can pick up on that if you just listen to him. They're also really dumb. In English, they're just really stupid. Holy shit, Bakugo, why would you think Kring Murder Explosion was a good name? <laughs> Let's see, did someone already post this? If not, I'm going to post it. But Please also, right I now. from hearing his English voice actor, like I said, I've heard clips, that guy I know has a pretty good delivery as, uh, uh, what you call it, dead, as as doing Bakugo. Bakugo is really, really weird. Like, he can swing from complete deadpan to, I'm going to fucking murder you, you shithead. I'm going to kill you. Die. Shine. His favorite thing to say. Which, um, uh, in the USJR, Deku immediately cottons onto, and is like, alright, I'm gonna act like Bakuko. What do I do? I just shout at the enemy to die. <laughs> die? That's a good comma. That is a good comma. But, yeah, so it's, I don't know, like I said, I want to try it and listen to it. I'm very familiar with the Japanese, but I want to, people say it's really good, so I want to be like, I want to check this out. I want to see if people are doing good stuff. I know, I know the, the, the actors are pretty good. It's also very funny. I know that, um, I believe it's uh, Izuku's voice actor. I think is it is it Brenner. Um, I know he's done some work with Team Four Star, who is also in Texas, and he is their. Uh, I presume he's going to stay their future Gohan, uh, not future oh. Gohan. He's going to stay their Bu Saga Gohan. Oh, because uh, he appeared in a flash forward in the Cell Saga, and I'm like, that's that's really funny to me, because uh, apparently DBZ abridged is not doing the literal same thing and leaving that Gohan and Goku always sound exactly the same. <laughs> Once again, no no shame on, on uh, Nozawa. She's super great. And considering she's in like her mid to late 80s now, still ye- was yelling up a storm in Super. But I do think it's a little weird that everybody in Goku's family literally sounds the same. But anyway, uh, my hero, Igu. Igu. It will, be, but it will be even more goo later, but it's still goo right now. If you're, if you like, were sad about the recap episode not being as, as, you know, flashy as you want to just go back and watch the whole rest of the series anyway, it's still good. The, like I said, the moment still hit. Okay, how long have we been going? Mm, about an hour. Ugh, I feel usually a little bit tired, but we, do we have any more things to talk about? Uh, let's see, anime wise, um, well, I guess I can mention this. Um, with the Funimation, I basically immediately went through and started picking up things that I maybe want to watch because, as I said, um, Crunchyroll and Funimation have definitely have different libraries, even if they have some overlap. And one of the things, um, I fucking picked up, um, despite people's whatever feelings they may have on it, is I picked up fucking Strike Witches because I was like, I'm going to finally fucking watch this. Yeah, actually, that's, uh, well, because there's a little bit of story to that, in that I have mentioned before that Strike Witches and spinoffs were some of my inspiration for uh, Mages at War, because I watched that when I was younger, because it was like, I'm like, I don't care about anime girls and vague Yuri themes, I'm like, but aliens and World War II planes and guns. Understand how Omega works. Anime girls are a dime a dozen, but yeah. guns and planes. Mm. Guns and planes. So I picked that up because um, I had I haven't watched Brave Witches, but I did watch on Crunchyroll. There is the fucking um, Strike Witches spinoff, which is basically um, the 501st um, 
Take Off, which is just basically just a comedy parody of it. He uses all the same voice actresses and everything, but it's all the girls just being dumb for whatever reason. I fucking love it because it's hella fucking funny. But I'm like, I don't actually understand these characters and how they work in a serious setting. And Crunchyroll didn't actually have the original the original series. They had um they have Brave Witches and the only the five of first. They're just missing the core series. I was like, that probably do- means there's there's some old ass licensing agreements in place then. Yeah, but you know, lo and behold, boot up Funimation, and it's all like, hey, yeah, we got this shit. So, so your was thoughts all- then? So like, I definitely want to uh, like mention this like. Um, people are right. Like, especially in the first few episodes, there is a lot of ass and cross shots. I'm just like, normally I'm not against these, but they're like literally in the middle of battle. Why? Why you do this? But other than that, I've been having a fucking blast. Um, so, um, there's also, there's also a small case of, um, cross contamination because this takes place around, um, well, originally it would be around World War II, but, because yeah, all is, the all the characters of Strike Witches are homages to real life World War II ace pilots. Uh yeah. Um, specifically, um, I believe that the term comes from the Russian Night Witches, which was the first um all women um aviation. Yeah, I, think, I can't. I can't remember. Like, mm-hmm. off the yeah, top I of my believe head. so. The yeah. the the Ruskies were so desperate up for manpower, they <laughs> built a fighter unit of nothing but women and. It's a Direction. it's a thing. It's uh, a thing. that's a whole different story. There's actually a um apocalypse world based RPG about the night witches. Yeah. But yeah, it's a it's a thing. So yes, I'm pretty sure the name is a reference to that. Yeah, so and then other world war connotations I'm not sure, but actually and I think uh, literally one of the characters, one of the Russian ones, is a is an actual f- was one of the female aces, funnily enough. Uh probably be Sonya then? Uh, yeah, it might be. But, uh, I'm, the cross contamination I'm actually thinking about is actually the ships, because World War II ships, um, the Fuso, which is the Japanese analog, they had the, um, Akagi, the, um, you, um, the, um, Kikaze, the Isokaze, and I'm all like, and my immediate thought was like, no, my Azure Lang girls, no! Yeah, do a, do of, a sick team up. Yep. Like, honestly, that'd be an interesting, that'd be a hell of an interesting collab. <laughs> I mean, there's been weirder collabs. I mean, for real. Yeah, the only thing is, I, I don't know. I don't know if um, if uh, Strike Witches or Brave Witches as a brand has any more stuff going on. Like, yes. I don't know. Well, I think the- it was uh, like it was very popular. I think it saved the studio for a while because it was very obviously it is quite well animated. There's a lot of there's oh, a yeah, lot no, of work into it. There's a lot of good animated scenes, and I'm like, holy shit. Like, yeah, no, and, and considering when this was, if you, like, look at the, the Neroi and, and a lot of their effects, that's, like, really good stuff. Yeah, this, no. That's, like, I think it's, like, ten years old at this point. Yeah. And like, obviously, I don't know how, like, how exactly well it looks, but at the time, it was very good. No, it's, like, even now, it, it still holds up animation-wise. Yeah. Although, I have to complain that some of the best animation is when the girls are, like, in the, on, it's, like, one of the best anime segments is, like, the fucking beach episode. I'm all, like, excuse me. I didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> Well, as I said, like, it's a little weird because this is, um, the anime has the problem of, like, these girls literally range between, like, 13 and 20 years old, and for some odd reason, most of them are weirdly stacked, I want to say. Yes, the, well, we've, we've talked about the Japanese and their complete misunderstanding of proportions before. Yeah, so I'm just I, all like... Wait, what is that? But yeah, it's a, it's a little weird, and they, so, they have the problem that every anime or anime style story has or even any young adult story basically is like okay kids need to fight aliens but why children uh so at least canonically in strike which is the excuse is as you get older your ability to do certain spells fades oh yeah no um i've just Uh, hit that point in the arc with um sakamoto yeah um like in in the second season um they run into a really old witch lady who can still fly on a broom so you don't lose all your talents just some of them start to fade as you get older for oh, well, no, no goddamn see, reason. You like in the first episode, um, Mia Fuji's mom and grandmother, you know, combine powers to do the healing. Yeah, so you can still do so. some talents, but maybe it's just shields. I don't know. I don't know. But shields are real fucking important when you're... They, they're very important for the, <laughs> for the battling space aliens, but still, it's... 
it's it's a really weird flimsy excuse because it seems like it only just works enough to make it so that the active fighting characters have to be like under 20 but still and so you're right they run actually um i don't remember her real name zucchini the the tiny italian of course is like 12 i think in the first season so yeah yes they're they can be a very young now most of them are in the middle and obviously i think the most of the best built ones are the older like Oh yeah, sure. Like, I'm pretty sure Shirley, Mina, and like they straight out say that like Sakamoto is like almost twenty, and I'm sure that Shirley and um, uh, I believe Mina's supposed to be like eighteen or nineteen. And yeah. while a little risky in America, uh, Shirley is at least uh, at least sixteen, if not older. Yeah, which is usually the okay range in Japan. Mm-hmm. That said, Japan does have a it does have this weird thing where they're most oh my prefectures God. fix this, but most of their 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 national age of consent is thirteen. So, shit's weird. Yeah, shit's weird. But I am um retweeting this salt boy older than dude because it is important. I am also going to retweet that. That is very important. <laughs> he is and, uh, the salt master. Those are those <laughs> are the enemies being salty about dealing him zero damage twice. Yep. Uh. Well, yeah, that would be a good pivot to briefly mention some other stuff, but I don't know. Are you done talking about Strike Witches? Well, as I said, like, I'm, I'm, I'm launching it. I'm enjoying it. I was a little worried because a lot of people were talking about, like, oh, my God, all the sexualization of of underage. And I'm like, yeah, I can see where they're I can see where they're going on. But, like, after the few first few episodes, it kind of calms down, aside for some, like, obvious fan service modes. And I'm like, yeah, no, this is fine. Whatever. Yeah, and I mean... That's uh, you. You always have to think about different markets and different yeah. makers. Like obviously, to us, there are certain things that are weird. And actually, this comes up with my hero. You know, like like a lot of people cannot forgive Bakugo because he was a middle school bully. But oh, no. how Japan thinks of bullying is way different than how we think of it. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that bullying is not probably a serious issue over there. And I think that Japan has been more conscious of like, oh man, shit, we should do something about that. But they are still their own country and their own culture, and so I don't. I'm always of the opinion of, of hey, it's not necessarily right to enforce our cultural values on everybody else as if they're the gold standard, because in America we're weird about other stuff. Oh yeah, like like you know, uh, hey, oh, you want to murder people? Fine, whatever. You want to show a boob? No, you can't do that on TV. How dare you know? So we have our own weird idiosyncrasies and hangups. So on the one hand, I can go that like. Yes, as an American and now an as adult, because like I said, Strike Witches is a while ago, so I was still in my teens when it came out, so whatever. Mm. And that's another thing to importantly remember. Some of these shows are aimed at uh, teenage boys in Japan, too, so. Yeah. Like, if if other people make it weird, that's their problem, but still, there is demographics to consider. But mm. as an adult, you know, American male now, I can go, mm, this, nah, this is this is a little uncomfortable, this is a little weird. But also, I can understand and go like, yeah. But it's not. It's not. I'm not making it either. Like, I just because I wouldn't do this or I wouldn't make this doesn't mean that necessarily they're wrong because they have to think about their own yeah. needs and wants and storytelling. Yeah. So, and like I said, like again, I'm enjoying it. it. I'm enjoying like all the rapport between like Mia Fuji and the rest of the witches. You know, they're slowly opening up. I did not think I would actually dis- dislike Perrine as much as I do, though. Because uh, per- Perrine is an infamous. Uh, you know, almost hate sync character. We're just like, man, she's everybody's like, ah, she's real annoying. She's the worst. I, like, like, I, don't, I don't ever thought she was the worst, but she is very clearly set up to be the annoying. She's one. a she's an annoying one because, like I said, all I um again, all I knew of her from was five oh first, where she is literally just you know chasing after Sakamoto all the time. She doesn't really interact with any of the other characters, so it's just like, oh, okay, yeah, she's she's kind of a dork. But now I see her I'm all like, Harine, you're a little bit of a bitch. Well, I mean, her country has been overrun by evil aliens, so. Uh, but I still do maintain that um, Barkhorn is still one of my favorites. Mm, yes. Uh, I be- Also, I believe both of the younger German aces are like 16, too, at minimum. Yeah. They're older. It's interesting. Yeah. Actually, have you seen um, 501st Takeoff? Probably not, no. no I have watched not, Brave no. Witches, but I don't think I watched the like comedy spinoff. Uh, as I said, they're, they're real, they're, it's, um, they're not, um, they're not, like, full-length episodes, they're, like, half-length episodes, so you can actually watch them pretty quick. Okay, I might look it up and, and power through it sometime. Because I said, it's, it's just the same girls, it's, like, really, it's 
really reduced animation. I don't think they actually use any um, frames. They just use stills and they just bob them around the fucking screen. Like, it's really simple animation, but for the style that they're going for, it really fucking works. Yeah, it's kind of funny. And it, they it, do have a lot of those comedy moments, because some, some of the girls are pranksters. Oh, yeah. They work together. Though, oh, also, no, I'm, like, sure, I'm sure you've noticed, like, you talked about, you know, Mia Fuji interact with certain other characters. They're, they also did the very other, obviously, Japanese thing. It's like, oh, boy, our cast is full of women. That means Yuri vibes. Oh yeah. In Five Hundred First, um, they really play up Mia Fuji's um breast loving. Uh, oh, you to... mean Mia Fuji's sexual awakening? Yeah. Yeah. No. So... There's a there's a there's a little bit of the gay panic in the main series. Yeah. No. I'm digging it. Which which works because on the other hand, uh, should I? I don't know. I don't know how far you are. That might be a spoiler. Um. Uh. uh let's see here. I just got to the point where Sakamoto got shot down by the human like Neroi. Because... Okay, so you're pretty far. I think I, I think because this would have come up when talking about that. You've probably has has Mina mentioned that she used to have a fiance yet? Oh yeah, yeah, I got yeah, past okay, that. So, she was all like, "No boys." Yes. So obviously, you want you know she is at least pr- probably bi, if not supposed to be straight, right? Like it's yeah. not it's not all Yuri bait. There's just a little bit of it. Just a little bit of mm-hmm. it. As I like again, I'm enjoying it. I I really am. It's like once I've got my priorities of. About like, all right, all right, you fucking like thirteen year old girl with like fucking D cups, calm down. And I'm like, nope, I'm having a good time. But uh, also, huge guns, Lucky. There's a boy's anti tank rifle in this series. No, actually, no. That's the other thing. Like, speaking of Lynn, like seeing like the deep. Here's the other thing I want to mention: the detail they put in the fucking guns in the ship is ridiculous. Honestly, yeah, that's one of the, the one of the things that that sold a lot of people on this series. Is like, okay, on the one hand, fan service Yuri trash, but. On the other hand, lots of technical detail. It's really weird how the Japanese go, some Japanese studios really go for that. The weapons are like, all very detailed. They're all very historically accurate. There are a lot of references. Um, uh, I think this was an early episode, but the the one where, uh, where uh, was it? is it Hartman? Uh, mm-hmm. She steals panties. That's reference yeah. to the fact that in real life, the male ace Hartman accidentally stole Adolf Hitler's hat once, and there was a big to-do about it. He was just like, oh, this is a cool hat. I'm taking it. It was Hitler's. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, it's 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 like like an Azure Lane level like historical in jokes. So it's it's very interesting. It's also it's really funny that you're watching that now as the AL anime is coming out. Oh yeah, which also uh, has involved some weird, possibly questionable fan service. How old is Javelin? We don't know. See, here's the thing that bugs me about AL um, because the only thing I know for sure is. Laf- Laffy likes alcohol. She actually Laffy does drink. is a drinker. Yes, it's weird. I think we've discussed this before. I think it's just that because they say their weapons shaped like humans, so obviously they are not human people. Um, but I think it's just that small ships are small. Yeah, well, they're the destroyers, so it's like. But then you get like other ships who are small, but then stacked, and you're just all like, I don't understand. You know, you're doing all those weird math gifts. You're trying to figure out is what. But Laffy, like, Laffy is tiny, but she likes to drink, so I guess she's not a kid? But then you're like, but y- Unicorn is clearly precious. How could I? Yeah, but she calls you Oni-chan and wants to go on dates with you, and I'm just all like, how even? And then there's the fuck- I I hope they don't include the Sakura ships who are literally kindergartners. That might make me sad. It's like, as long as they're playing around in base, being safe as the fucking Yes, ship. if they just get cameos- that would be great. If they have to actually fight me, buddy, I might be sad. I, I might cry. And I will consider the animators monsters. I, like, like while you. some of the, some of the, you know, uh, e- Eagle Union destroyers and light cruisers are small, they, they at least seem, you know, reasonably like it's, Haman getting disabled is just funny, even though she is small. But there, there are, you know, it's, so it's, it's, but yeah, it's, it's interesting to see the two comparisons because there are, I, I do think that Strike Witch is kind of, this was pre kind of the gotcha games revolution, but it definitely oh, showed yeah. off that like, hey, this, honestly, I think that's been an anime concept for a while is what if we just did characters that were X, but they're cute girls instead. But I think it really, it shows the market viability because it was a really big hit at the time. Actually, I'm trying to think back of like, like girls as X. When did that really take off? I'm not sure. Because I do know that, like, cute girls uh, doing cute things, like, took off around the Lucky Star, because Lucky Star was actually pretty goddamn famous for that, which is also another old anime, but... 
Like, I'm trying to remember, like... Yeah, like, I kind of feel like that's what it, like, morphed in. Like, cute girls doing cute things kind of morphed into cute girls being ex. Yeah, probably. Like, a... Okay, so cute... We've established that an all-female cast being cute, um, which would be stuff like Lucky Star, like Azumanga Dayo. Like, yeah, we've established uh, that that's a viable genre that people love. People love Slice of Life girls just hanging out, and it's marketable. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, that that is an unusual thing, is uh, ladies are universally marketable, because girls like them and boys like them. Mm-hmm. And, I don't know, even I don't think even gay men are opposed to cute girls. If you are, let me know. But I don't think I've met any, so it's it's a very good demographic choice. Whereas, it is. if you do a, a a a depending on how you do a boy focused show, you might not have universal marketability because, yeah. like, I got what is it? Was it Token Ranbu is the cute boys are swords anime and gotcha game? Like, I I mostly hear women gushing about that. I've never heard like a dude say, "Oh, but the fight choreography is good. Those guys are so cool." I'm like, eh. yeah. Here's the thing, crazy thing. I think Token Ramba was actually animated by UFO Table as well. The anime was it? That would be hilarious because it's. I I think some of the characters who are swords are are noble phantasms in fate. Wait, no, it wasn't Token Rambu. No, no, no. Um, it was a different. It was, one. it was a different one. But still, that would be hilarious. But yeah, so it's the the demographics thing is funny. I think my mouth. I've I've just thought about this. I'm talking a lot. I think my mouth is running because I'm a little bit tired. Oh, okay. It was a Token Rambu, but it was a spinoff series. It was um, mm. Katsugeki Token Rambu, which was um and produced by a UFO Table. Interesting. But yeah, I now, feel so like it I'm wasn't the main. So it wasn't the main series, but um one of the so a spinoff was animated by a UFO Table. So mm. mm-hmm. that's the thing. That it probably looks beautiful. It probably does. But yeah, so I think you're right that like once we realized that. Wow, cute girls is a perfect demographic snapshot for everybody. What if we just did all our other anime genres, but with girls instead? I mean, Maho Shoujo was popular for a long time with multiple audiences. Oh yeah, not like I never just because of where I was in life and timing wise, I didn't watch Sailor Moon as a kid, but I probably could have. Well, like here's the thing I've noticed: like just because something might have a girly presence doesn't mean it doesn't appeal to like greater demographics. Like, look at the fucking My Little Pony. Um, phenomenon. Yes, a huge revolution, which I think was in tar- part due to, I never, I never got, like, I, I tried it, like, I watched a couple episodes, it didn't really grab me, but I could see why it would grab people, it was very smartly written. It was very smartly written, so as long as, like, whatever the genre may be, as long as it's smartly written, you can go outside your demographic, but there's also, like, on the other hand, there's probably just some things, it's like, alright, if you put A plus B, you are gonna get immediate fucking views. Right, you will, you will hook people, we know about that, because, yeah. Cause yeah. You know, uh, like people talk about clickbait or whatever, but it's it's always been a thing. If you can make a hot pitch, people want to buy that. Also, yeah, I yeah. talked about not watching Sailor Moon. You know what I did watch as a kid was I watched uh, Magical Girl Lyrical Nana all three seasons. The lasers were great. Ah, uh, that's another thing on my list I need to actually watch. Mm, yeah, it's I don't know. I haven't watched it in a while, but the music was always really good because it's <laughs> music. Nana plays a character and also sings the songs. It's a great excuse. But it's like I have like I'm trying to catch up on like some old stuff like not not as a character is great because her solution to problems is ah I see you are in crisis I will defeat you and become your friend through laser beams like her yeah, solution need- is like ah you are suffering inside I will and so are, you're not really my enemy but in order to make you understand I will blow the shit out of you with laser beams I love it. There were a yeah, lot like, of, that's the thing that was commonly, like, I haven't watched a lot of super robot shows to compare it, but a lot of people say that the fight choreography between magical girls is like a super robot show. It's like watching Gundam or something. It. I can dig it. I can dig it. Also, I really, I, the, just the way they handled, like, special attacks and the, the, the wands which spoke in very good English were very cool. Like, uh, like, uh, Fate's weapon was Bardiche, and it, it had a really cool voice in English. It would be like, you know, stand by, ready. And like, oh, that's cool. That's a cool effect. When, when the Japanese people actually care about how the English people sound, that's always a good sign. Oh, by the way, um, speaking about No Gun Life, I'm pretty sure the main character, um, is voiced by, um, Junichi Suave. So if you want to hear more fucking Emiya, Emiya voice. That's always fun. I, that was one of the funniest (laughs) things about, (laughs) <laughs> uh, killing bites. Killing bites was just random animal fact with Emmy. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> so the honey badger Emmy, is. Oh, this is great. Uh, like, I'm not 100 percent sure, but it's that deep. 
Like, now that I think a bit about it, um, he has that deep, hard-boiled cop fucking... Um, he does. He does have the right voice for that. Yeah, so... And also the voice to yell animal effects. Oh, I miss Killing Bites. You were so fun. Season 2 when? I don't know. Maybe they need more of the manga to come out. I mean, they left the stinger for it. They they did. They did the whole stinger, because obviously there there is a manga. The The story didn't stop there. You could be you could not be blamed for thinking it would stop there, but it didn't. So that was pretty funny, or pretty fun. But yeah, no, I I like killing bites because it gave me so many fucking great. Well, first of all, <laughs> when we were doing Power Hour, that's how old it is. They gave me some great fucking thumbnails. Speaking of clickbait, but it was just so, like I said, it was so basically pro wrestling. It was incredibly weird and stilted and melodramatic, but it worked because it it sold you one hundred percent. It was like. The pangolin guy is the big boss, and it's like, I know, I fucking guess the pangolin's like a living tank. And like, okay, I guess the pangolin guy's the big boss. <laughs> like, it's it's really funny. Uh it like and it sells it so well. So yeah. I hopefully there'll be a second season of that just so we can Oh, uh, just so I can return my dumb killing bites recaps. So actually if there's something I need another season of right now, it's Angel's Mega's Bride. The and the manga's still fucking going, and they're having a fucking heist, they're having a school life, and I'm just like, shit's good. Uh, isn't there something coming out this? Well, we're not entirely sure because I'll... I don't think it's a I'll... full new season because I haven't heard anybody talking about it. But they announced earlier this year that there would be more anime. Um, well, yeah, and they also did this giant. Well, they did a giant teaser to to on in conjunction with um an announcement that the next volume was going on sale. But it's just all like people are just were literally just like, how dare there better be more coming out. Because it's basically, they're still like, I don't know, like, they're actually far enough to keep, to make a, no, let's see here, look before you leave, any port in a storm, live and live. Okay, so that was 45. So the, the first, um, the first, two, uh, the 26 episodes of the first season went to chapter 45, and they're, the manga's on chapter 60 right now, so. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's like full metal, it's a monthly manga, isn't it? Yeah. Which is which is why the original run of the Full Metal anime overtook the manga because the it wasn't done yet. Though that was a really cool thing they did. Speaking of of fun, major Funimation product uh, projects, uh, where they went back and did it over again. Mm -hmm. Brotherhood, Brotherhood is, so is amazing. Good. It's so it is good. so good. I love it. I need. To, I own the Blu-rays, so I can just watch it whenever. But I love it a lot. Uh, yeah, anime is good. Kids, is anime saved? Who knows. Well, see, here's the, here's the crazy thing, like, actually going back to the Funimation cruncher old thing. It's like, with Funimation now pulling out, you know, their fucking, you know, their, you know, exclusive deals, Crunchyroll really can't, re can't really take on the stance of, oh, we fucking saved anime. Especially now that fucking Funimation literally has Big Papa Sony back in the movies, all like, we're gonna throw money at shit. Like, I think, uh, what was else that Sony, Sony also made another power move somewhere else. I can't remember what the fuck it was. Uh, was it in games? No. Maybe. I don't know. I know that when they when they built Funimation as their licensing brand, they like bought a manga entertainment and a couple of other distributors like in the EU. Yeah, I can't remember, but I don't know. Uh, Funimation um, Funimation is definitely something that's like now that I look at it and all the time, it's like, yeah, no, this is um this is some strong ass competition. To this is this out. is this is big product uh yeah. co-op. If Crunchyroll doesn't actually like start looking at the shit they have under the hood, they actually might find themselves outstripped pretty quickly. Yeah, it's interesting. I think, and when we've discussed, you know, because some people have said that Crunchyroll does give a decent amount back to the, to the, the studios producing anime. On the oh, other yeah. hand, Sony, through its various many tentacled arms, not only owns studios who make anime, but also has shitloads of money to throw at them anyway. Yeah. So it's like, I don't, I don't know if you can be saying that anymore, that like, like you have to be able to make your vi business viable and still do that, right? Because, you know, S Sony is in Japan. They mm -hmm. do stuff there. They own pr pictures out there. Um, and it's like, like everybody knows Netflix is slow. Um, actually, that reminds me. I don't, I don't know. I saw this that was posted in something because you were talking about a anime series that is only going to be on Netflix. Oh uh, so, yeah, B Stars. Um, um, did you see that thing? I don't. I didn't look into it. The, son, the author said something about the fact that he, the creator, discovered that it was only available in Japan for now. Oh, I didn't. What's up with this? Oh, I I don't know any details. I think it was posted like last night in Anime Manga. Uh, let me scroll here. up and see. I'll try and find posted. it. Yeah, it's a J 
just above my post about uh, Danger Zone, there's a Reddit thread, so you can look into that. But I, I, I don't want to. I I was asking if you'd looked into that, but yeah, I don't know. I'm assuming that he wasn't happy, but I don't know. Because it's an interesting thing to think about. Creators don't usually uh don't usually discuss how their distribution turns out. You know, right? Yeah. So it's it's a very interesting thing to say to to see. I should say. Blah, blah, speaking. Well, like, because, like, here's the thing, like, like, we actually had this, this we had, uh, I don't remember if we talked about this on the show, but we actually had this uh, big discussion about the effects of piracy. Well, yeah, because we, and, it's, and, that was a big discussion that was kicked off by somebody else saying that they, the way I believe that creator phrased it was, I don't want to hear about if you read a, a scanlation yeah. of my, m- my manga. Not like, don't do it, but like, don't talk to me about it. Yeah. Which is a very interesting way to phrase that, I think. Yeah, well, well, because, like, the way you take it is, like, like honestly, the person can't do anything about it. So, you know. Sure. Because inter- internet's gonna, you know, internet. But well, at yeah. the same time, I guess he could do something other... about specific people, but you're right. He can't do anything about but, uh, the like, nature of piracy. Um, um, but um, people who do have, like, these things are, like, because, like. On the um, other hand, I've, I believe I've heard stories where. People will you like if you go to Japan, an author will sign a fan translation that somebody has done. Like, oh yeah, some people think it's it's cool to get that global distribution. It's a oh, really yeah. we. This was the, the crux of our conversation to boil down a really long discussion was licensing is hard and it's really mm-hmm. complex. Yeah, you can't but, like, you can't assume that there's one truth. Yeah, but this person like I'm like I'm looking at the thing right here. It's all like. But if you do have like all those licensing deals and things that are getting distributed, it's like, why wouldn't you want your stuff to go as far as it possibly can? Because I'm pretty sure this person does know that this person does know that, you know, their stuff is enjoyed on a global scale because I fucking love Beastars. I really do. And I am like really super upset that it's only on Japanese Netflix. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know if Netflix will ever. They probably do because there's a lot of streaming services going out there. So Uh I could I could see them eventually switching to a week by week release like. I think some broader Netflix users might find that a little bit weird, but if if they want to compete in anime streaming, they might need mm-hmm. to try to do that. Yeah. And I've heard some people say that, like, ah, uh, you know, you won't cancel your Netflix subscription to switch to piracy, right? Like, you... Oh, no. So, it's it's a... They might just see it as, a, as they're not going to lose anything for it, but I think if they want to stay competitive, they're going to have to, like, keep up that fight, because you're right, talking about, like, oh, Funimation is obviously getting a lot of money behind them, if Crunchyroll, Crunchyroll's no longer the only game in town, they might need to actually, even if it's just small stuff, fix some stuff and show some improvement. Otherwise, they might lose market share. Yep. Which, hey, com- uh, fair competition is good. Like, it's it's healthy for well, people yeah, to a, compete. That's the thing. It's like, it's not good to have a monopoly because when you have a monopoly, you can let your quality standards slip. And, and honestly, I think that was people's complaint about Crunchyroll for a while was just that, well, Crunchyroll's the only game in town, so they're lazy, right? Like, they're... Yeah. Their video players were a little out of date. Their subtitles sometimes had errors that they would never fix, you know, because they're they're quick and dirty subs. They're trying to yeah. make this stuff show up like, what is it, less than eight hours after it airs in Japan? Oh, actually, I think it's earlier. I think it's like an hour. Oh, God, no, that, I, I can't imagine. They must be getting early copies of the script or something. Oh, yeah, no, like, actually, I was looking at Funimation. They actually have the trademark for the term simuldub. Yes, because I think they invented it. <laughs> yeah. They invented the so- concept of... of- basically same day dubbing yeah. uh which is a whole other hilarious like we like i can totally understand oh man you occasionally goof up the subs when you have an hour turnaround time like simultaneously yeah. holy shit simul dubbing yeah they have to like if i'm if i know like um i'm pretty sure like they say they, they're they gonna have it in within like a certain time but um i'm pretty sure yeah they're like there are these people are like they have like fucking people in japan you know, shaking hands, extending business cards, making deals to get, like, early copies. Yes, so they, they are get, like, literally script. getting early looks at the script or even some of the, like, in-production stuff so that they can be ready to go the moment the episode is live, watch it, finalize the script, put the people in the booth, and go. Which yeah. is saying something, because I know that re- doing a recording is a big deal. Like, heck, we don't do any editing, we don't do any scripting. We sometimes have trouble running a show together where we talk about nothing for hours on end. We do um, it somehow. But organizing multiple people over things to collate a script, read the script, stitch it together, keeping in mind that it's anime, that means they have to sync to lip flaps and all that other bullshit, you know, 
They can't just do a literal one-to-one translation. It won't match up. Thanks, different syllables. Uh, so they have to figure that out, record it. All the actors have to get it right in that amount of time and go. And it's just, ooh. like, logistically, that just, you know, sends a shiver down my spine. Ugh. Mm-hmm. And they do it. Now, they can only do it for so many titles a core, but they're doing it. And no, as, as Axe pointed out, I no, I think they are doing something right. They've I think they've picked a very good niche to get into and, like, try and build this up as their thing. And it's... If they're the only one doing that tech, it's fair of them to say that it's, it's their their trademark. Um, yeah. Fantasy Flight Games some, did something dimler, similar. They basically invented what they call the living card game format and have trademarked it because they were the they were the first ones to really sell this idea of like, okay, so the card game is alive. It changes. New stuff happens. It grows, but it's not like collectible. It's not randomized. It's not like you have to collect them all. You buy what you want, knowing what's in it, and we'll, to keep things fresh, like, they occasionally rotate sets out, for instance. Like, and they made a really unique take on collectible card games into living card games. So I think it's fair that if they, if uh, Funimation has developed the simuldub technology and technique, they can, they can, I mean, a court obviously said that that's fair game to, to trademark or copyright. Yeah. And See, hey, like, they've, uh... got a, they've got a unique thing. Um... And uh, Netflix has their unique thing where, yes, okay, they slap the Netflix original brand on stuff they just exclusively license. They do that with European stuff, too. But they are actually funding anime. So oh, yeah, no, what's, actually, um, what's Crunchyroll actually listening? What is their, what is their shtick? Uh, well, it's like, like um, Crunchyroll actually does also fund, like, a lot of their animes and stuff. Like, you can actually see them on, like, project list teams and whatnot. And there are definitely some animes where they are all about, like, look at what we did, like Dr. Stone right now. Yeah, they, like, in the past, I know that Crunchyroll has been a little bit preachy about the, like, hey, don't do piracy yeah. anymore. We're Crunchyroll. We're, we're directly funding anime, so give us money. Yeah. But now that's, now that's not as much of a that's gimmick. Fine. Everybody does nope. that. Yep. Even Amazon Prime gets their, get theirs every, every their um, uniques every, uh, four yeah. or so. And heck, even if they're not directly, like, Netflix approached studios and was like, hey, what's a project you'd like to do? We'll fund it if you give us exclusive rights, right? Even if Amazon's not doing that, Amazon and Crunchyroll, when they shell out to buy episodes, they're sometimes, their licensing f- uh, fees are effectively paying for entire episodes of this series to get made, you know? Like, they're mm-hmm. covering the whole budget, which is saying something. Uh, but still, it's like, now from what you've said, Crunchyroll does have something that's so far unique in that they've got a... A online manga selection, yes, which is fairly unique. There's not a lot of good. I don't know of a lot of good providers for that technology. Well, like here's the thing. Like this is something I've actually been noticing. Um, especially like um, I don't know of like how many magazines, but uh, Viz Media does actually have online readers for their mangas, and actually does give like the, the here's the interesting bit gives the latest like like three chapters you can just read for free. So you can't access like the whole thing, but if you're actually keeping up on a on a week to week basis, you can reach read like the main like I think Shonen Jump for free on their main site. Mm-hmm. So the, also uh, now that I'm thinking about it, because I'm looking at Twitter, uh, there is something we should we should maybe throw out there since we're talking uh, about what? Japan. What's up? Um, they have recently been hit by a very large typhoon. Oh no! Uh, and it's apparently pretty serious. So yeah, uh, oh, every, yeah. everybody once again keep Japan and you know. Yeah, and, and there's, there's hardworking studios making you all that, all that weave entertainment. Keep them in your thoughts, because uh, uh, it's, it's apparently typhoon. pretty serious. Oh God, we're storming sixty years. What? Well, welcome How to dare. welcome to climate change, Lucky. No, everybody's setting records. I think I think Excuse we had me. another record set. We had a couple of record setting hurricanes lately. It keeps happening. Maybe there's something wrong here. <laughs> I always like the idea of apparently um, Earth is actually this really violent um, planet and other planets um, that are in the I can't remember what the fucking belt is of um, sustainable life are just actually really calm and peaceful. And we just apparently just got the angriest fucking planet. The Goldilocks zone. Goldilocks zone. Thank you. I know we're Earth's an interesting place. We've got a pretty, pretty interesting. Obviously, it's the only planet we've confirmed to have like biology hydrology and all that stuff but we've, uh, we've I got a pretty interesting have, I, there are I planets where we're like oh these have water they could be life supporting but like i think we're the only one that's like we know for sure this whole systems are here that said uh, i'm pretty sure we can assume based on science that our obviously our geology and everything happens for a reason so we can assume yeah. that similar situations would create it but still there's like um 
Uh, we have a very large static moon, which uh, protects us from asteroid impacts and meteorites a lot. Not all of them, but most of them. Uh, we've got Jupiter Maybe. out there as our bouncer. <laughs> uh, Jupiter sucks up a lot of rogue asteroids and comets because it's got a lot of gravity. Uh, though, God knows what actually... I don't. I haven't checked my planetary science. I don't know what the current running theory on the asteroid belt is. Whether it's just like a debris field that happened to form, or if there were, like... There are some probably larger planetesimals that were broken up in there, but I don't think that accounts for all the debris. The debris. Debris. Did we mention how much we love space? We do love space. I'm, I I finally knuckled down, and I started working on my one of my infamous cheat sheets for Eclipse Phase 2. And ran oh, yeah, some we're actually... Characters. We are gearing up for that. Yes, I'm... Running through the rules, trying to figure out if there's anything I missed. I think I got a good grasp on character creation now. I probably want to write the gear guide, and I don't know what I'm going to put all in the cheat sheet yet. I know I at least want to put all the traits in one place, because there's a lot of traits, and unfortunately, this I think is a legit criticism of EP2, not a lot of them do a lot. Like, you've got 20 fucking customization points, and I'm just like, wow, the trait list is really, really, really titchy. It's really, really specific. Like... I mean, obviously, I would say anybody who's doing any kind of inner system character, if you have money at all, buy some level of resources just because there's no cash now. So <laughs> buy some level of resources. There's no actual tracked money. It helps and it makes sense. But other than that, it's like, I don't know. Like, I think the demo character I picked, I can look at her. Uh, I think it's the drone trait. So you don't have to do tests. Yeah, drone affinity. So you don't have to do tests to do drones. Uh, I went up all the way to resources three. I decided to do spatial visualization just because that's a cool concept. Mm -hmm. And because her lucidity ended up a little low with my stat spread, I got composure, which gives you plus five lucidity. And then I was like, addiction caffeine, why not? But it's coffee. It, it's not as not as flashy. Also, like caffeine or nicotine is like the trademark addiction of Eclipse Phase. Everybody is always like, need coffee or ah oh, fuck, this body needs cigarettes. <laughs> Actually, I remember, in fact, that was actually a thing in the fucking um, opener and the um, yeah, original in, in, book. Yeah, in the first one, uh, the opening fiction, Lack is, he wakes up, what time is it? Fuck, I need a cigarette. It happens a lot. It's like, it was actually an ego trait, not a morph trait. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. Uh, yeah, I remember that. But yeah, so, uh, I, think, I think the packages work out a pretty good stat spread. Like, this character has a couple of 80s and some other really good spreads. Though it's funny, I've built, obviously, a very good hacker who has, like, InfoSec 80, bought a specialization because they're cheap, Brain Hack 90, uh, got a little bit of guns, but it's like, wow, you can't lie for shit. You're, you're, like, I think, got, like, a 30 in Persuade and a 25 in Deceive, just because of how the points worked out. So it's like, yeah, you're very clearly a sit-at-home character. <laughs> Shitloads of knowledge so skills, which I like. Oh, got another 80. I got three 80s. I worked out, got no computer science at 80. Uh, so Knowledge. I tuned some stuff up in my uh, my HTML character sheet format, too, because I was reminded running through character creation that uh, Perceive and Fray are double defaulted, so their their minimum is now double whatever your your stat is, which is good, because uh -huh. those are core skills. So even if you don't put any points in Fray, your Fray is still ref times two, and your Perceive is still int times two, which is good. It gives you, like, basic ability you know yeah because most the average is 15 so that means that you've got at least a 30 percent chance to dodge or to see without putting any points in it and it's much easier to put points in which is good because i'm pretty sure dodging bullets is still fray halved or at least under some kind of penalty because dodging bullets is hard it is hard but fast i haven't really decided what i want to do i'm kind of waiting to, until everything comes together i kind of want to play a fucking agi that's just riding shotgun on someone's ghost rider yeah, i mean you could do that infomorph stuff is right in there yeah, no, it's like, it's all in there, so I'm just like, uh, what do people want to do? I mean, so the book has the standard boilerplate character creation advice, like, mm. create characters together and coordinate, so make sure your mm. specialties don't overlap. Um, yeah. We'd be doing firewall missions at start, so that would be the character packages you'd do, so that's the character origins, but yeah, just, honestly, I think there's enough spread in the packages and in the number of player characters we got, let's see, because we got my three homeboys, and also Axis said he wants to do EP, and he's in the secret club, so that's four. That's a pretty good spread for all your basic character archetypes. Yep. So somebody somebody needs to do tech stuff and computers, because that's a big deal. Somebody needs to be able to talk to people, like in a live human being. If you're going to be a robot, that can not be you, but it also could be you. I've seen some some people play some very social AGIs, and it's funny. 
Um, but we need a we need a brain. We need a a a, a talkie. We need somebody to just shoot people. And usually, what's the fourth role in EP? Let's see. You got a face. You got a uh, techie. Uh, medic probably a support character. Medic support or the driver, I guess. Yes. Yeah, just just a support person, whether it's operating your vehicles or not, which is pretty easy because this character is a really good. Like the example character I made, just to familiarize myself with character creation, um, I built her as a criminal hacker, and like I said, so hacking skills phenomenal, perfect for that. But also, I think because I rolled randomly, I completely rolled this character randomly where I could, uh, just to see how that works out, and it actually is pretty balanced because this character. Uh, has um, uh, pilot ground at 70 and pilot space at 60 with, I think, just one... Is it the interest? Yeah, the interest is pilot. So it was Enclaver, Careers Hacker, Interest Pilot, Faction Criminal. Because um, factions don't give you a lot of skills now. Now it's it's all about background career interest. Mm-hmm. But those those stacked up pretty good to give this person a decent spread through a lot of things and actually, like, you know, have skills to do things in multiple aspects. Um, yeah, yeah. So she could operate drones. She can hack. It was a she. I decided randomly. Uh, gave her a menton. I'm a little. I they kept a lot of morphs, but I feel like at least with base humanoid morphs, they're not as exciting anymore. But I don't know. I don't know. Like they, have, they still like... have a decent spread. Like this character is two insight, and because I had leftover morph points and I didn't want to fuck around with gear, she got an extra point of morph flex. And has like I said, like again, this is like this is my like a term to limit because I, I as I can't remember like, like if they ever really truly addressed you know the gear porn slash you know your body is only temporary issues. So I'm just like I like stuff, but I also don't want to be bogged down with this body because I think we've talked about that and um yeah we've talked about a close phase before. I th- they've definitely made resleeving easier and they've made morph acquisition more streamlined. Yeah, and but I think still, I like, think they've tried to make morphs less distinct and identity building so you can treat them as more disposable, you know? Yeah. Um, but there's still like I, be- a little- I believe the assumption is now that when you get, this was at least in the beta, when you add a piece of tech to your character sheet, you're also adding its blueprint. So if you have prep time, you can basically always be, like, if you start with a gun as part of your starting character packages, you can always assume to be like, I can make a gun if I have a couple of hours somewhere. Gun! So it's, it's less, it's still ephemeral, but it's less ephemeral because you can, if you have a little bit of prep time, which Eclipse Face has always loved prep time. It oh, has yeah, always well, been the... about having the right tools for the job and the oh, skills. Yeah. And, and, you know, I do remember they, they, they actually went a lot more in detail of like how fabbing technology works mm-hmm. and like where you can fab, how you can fab, what level of fabbing you can access. Yeah. I do know they definitely um, extem- extended upon that in um, second edition. Mm-hmm. Because so. they realized that that was a thing that people were confused by. Yeah. So it was like, okay, we're going to collate these rules and like, okay, here's how it works. Fabricating Please. is the essential technology, like, if there are two essential technologies that makes Eclipse Phase Eclipse Phase, one is resleeving, the idea that yeah. you can digitize your mind, store it, and upload it into a different body and still be you, effectively. And now there's some there's some spiritual and moral debate about that, but functionally, you're you. Functionally. For purposes of a player character, it's it's just... It's like asking the question, if uh, if I'm playing D&D and a dragon burns me with acid breath down to my boots, but somebody casts, what is it, True Resurrection, where they don't even need your corpse? Yeah. And I come back to life, am I still me? Yeah. For purposes of the game world, yes. And I don't I don't think a lot of people playing D&D want to get that deep in it, but still. <laughs> no, my it's, players didn't. It's, it's functional. It's just like, oh, well, gotta bring him back to life. You know, Eclipse Face mm-hmm. is the same. They found a way to justify respawns in a uh, sci-fi setting, which is very hard otherwise. The second thing is fabrication. The idea that just, if you get a little of your raw essential resources and you can rub them together and you can generate electricity, you can build anything you need if you have enough time. Mm-hmm. So th- those two technologies make the sci-fi setting of EP. And then the third one to throw in there would probably be Gates, but that's not even, not even like a technology. Titan shit is basically magic and it freaks everybody out. Fucking Titan shit. <laughs> That's always what people say. He's always like, God damn, what was it? Uh, I left a lot of fun things for you guys to find on the moon. I think you found... I think I was like, uh, tell me if you remember this one. I think I think one of the things you found was the what I called the speech zapper turbo. The oh, device yeah. that would print out what you were saying mid-sentence and play it back to you. 
Yeah, and it would always throw you off because it was the um the effect of trying like um people if you want to try an interesting thought experience like turn on your microphone and try to talk and try and talk. That's actually a real technology. That's uh, I call yeah. it the speech zapper turbo because there's an app. It's designed for crowd control where it yeah. basically it records what you're saying and it plays it like a back to you on like a slight delay and it really fucks people up. Uh, yeah. I'm listening to my microphone right now as I talk, so I've I've gotten more used to that. Mm -hmm. It's also not like on a the thing the speech zapper does is is on like a set delay, but yeah, that really that throws people for a loop. Like people break down. Oh yeah, no, like I can't like I can if I talk slowly, I can I can work through it, but I can't talk at my normal space and hear myself talking at the same time, like saying the same thing. I just can't do it. No, I had to get I had to get used to it to to do this, but that's just so, the like, way a recording setup works. So, yeah, so like yeah, I remember the speech speak the the speech zapper, and it was kind of freaky because it was even then like even like in character it definitely threw off my character. It's just like hey, let, words can't right because it I just the way it works was it was just a little device. It's probably Titan made because it's you know like perfectly nano fabbed, but it just you hold it and it somehow telepathically instantly finishes your thought for you in text form. Yeah, and it's just like and it doesn't. It doesn't hurt you. It doesn't do anything else. It's just really creepy. I think you guys had to make some 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 uh some stress rolls, and I don't know. Did you guys just throw it the fuck away? I probably don't not. Remember, you guys I were hoarders. It... You probably put it in a in a specimen container and gave it to Firewall or something, and be like, "We don't want to deal with this. Take it away." Yeah. Yeah. No, I think the only like yeah, because you don't fuck with Titan Tech in Eclipse phase. No. I was in. De oh no, it was in Delta Green where we started keeping weird shit. Because action scientists, I'm all like, this is science. Yeah, you kept some samples. Yeah. But no, in the Eclipse phase, it's all like, special made containers or burn. Uh, can, well, yeah, actually, they don't literally say SCP, but in the Firewall book, it's like, uh, I don't remember the exact details, but it's along those lines, because SCP is secure, contain, protect. It's like, yeah. it's, it's destroy, contain, or study, I think is yeah. Firewall's motto. Is it stable enough that you can study it? No, then you, is it is it stable enough you can contain it? No, blow it the fuck up. I don't care yep. what it takes. Get rid of it. Yeah, that was actually the bed. The um, I actually found one of my old characters, um, which I was actually pretty Jones in for. It. I actually made a two in one character called the Beauty and the Beast because if you guys didn't know, fucking Omega has made a fuck ton of um, Eclipse Phase First Edition homebrew shit. And one of the things you did is you actually made what was it X Rep, which was the X Human reputation system. Yeah, I think I I borrowed that from somewhere. You you when you started, but you had and like that was something I was kind of like, oh shit, I want to play an ex-human. I'm gonna be completely fucked up. But um, actually, yeah, they... think, no, that's right. I think I did. I was called like Alpha Rep or something. I think I I think we brainstormed that on the. I say we multiple people brainstormed that on the EP forums. Yeah, no, like it wasn't me. It was probably you. I well, yeah, I'm no, a sounding when I say we, I mean I didn't do it alone. But yeah, I think I remember yeah. that now because I think it was Alpha Rep because X Rep is Gate Crashers. Oh yeah, that's right. But yeah, there was a there was a rep system for X humans that was debated. Yeah, and so but, yeah, uh, and you were like, "Oh, that's cool. I'm gonna do something with that." And I never got to do something with Cause that because you. Well, that's the thing about about uh about EP first edition at least is that is that it it they they had a lot of playable factions at the end. Like you could be there were rules to be an X human. There were rules to be an exotic like. One of the one of the guys living in like Neptune or or Uranus and stuff. Um, a lot of that's cut. A lot of that's simplified for um, EP two, but also it's not as important. There's not like rules behind it. You just get a free knowledge skill and one of your motivations. And the game is even like, if you have no idea what faction you are right now, don't sweat it. Add it later. <laughs> F you know, figure it out later. So it's it's much more free form. And while they they suggest all the big factions. You could theoretically do lots of different stuff. And on the one hand, I kind of like that because it, it, while faction identity is important, it also de-emphasizes it for the player characters, which is good because it makes it easier to build character groups that get along, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, the, the second edition we've talked about this, it has the, I believe it's the three setups. It says that you can be firewall, you can be gate crashers, or you can be criminals, basically, which yeah. were what most people did with EP anyway. They just solidified it as like, there's a lot of different character options here. Mm -hmm. But I think making it so that the faction is less of a mechanical identity means that it's a lot easier to just do whatever. And mm -hmm. so it it makes you less required to be invested in the factions. And obviously, lots of people are super invested in some of these factions for a lot of reasons. But 
I think it helps player characters a little bit because it, it means that you don't have to dive first in and be like, oh, I don't know. Hypercorps sound good. What do you mean hypercorps are bad? Like, it's, <laughs> um, and even like, I think I talked about this, you know, they they are much better at showing all sides of their major factions now because like there are anecdotal stories about how the the anarchist, you know, social media rep focused system can go wrong um, because some people don't aren't. I don't. I don't know what the some people would just flat out say it, and whether they be condescending for it. So I'm trying to find the non condescending word. They're just not um, conditioned, acclimated to that lifestyle, so they don't fit uh. in. And then if you, hey, guess what? If you don't fit into our weird collectivist society, then they ostracize you. Which yep. Some people would say that that's the point, but also if you're you know you're you're trying to do a certain depending on your core values, if you're trying to do certain broad truths like you know individual freedom or whatever you can kind of be like but then you were that guy did nothing wrong you you sassed him for no reason basically just because he didn't fit in with your your preconceived societal values and now he can't do shit like there's a there's an anecdotal story for that guy which is so yeah it's i i like the second edition a lot and i need to just like i said double check myself with the mechanics to make sure i can run it and that when players create characters i can help them answer questions and but also you guys should do some amount of talking to yourselves because that's what it says. Build your characters together. Whew. Uh, so we've been going for almost two hours, and I am kind of tired. But I was saying that I, I we've been going for almost two hours, and I'm a little I'm a little sleepy. So I was going to ask if you had anything else you wanted to talk about. Uh, let's see. So we covered gotcha. We covered anime. We talked about everything in between. Mm-hmm. We talked about tabletop. Ah. Uh, I don't think there's usually anything in the tank. Oh, well, I guess we can talk a little bit about the streaming situation, I guess. Oh, yeah, sure. If you want to talk about channel stuff, that makes sense. Before you do that, while I was waiting on you, I also thought of another thing that I like that is a streamline. Because we talked about how EP2 is streamlining stuff. Uh, They changed how you do languages now. Now you just know languages. They're not a skill. Oh, cool. Which is good. You don't have to spend points on them. Like yeah, you does. can buy them with customization points, and but it's just how smart are you? Are you average smart? Okay, you get two lang. Everybody's bilingual by default. Are you extra smart? You get extra languages. Oh yeah, it's a transhuman future. Future, 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 future. Which is future. and it, it's and they're also like they're much more explicit about and real time translation tools exist, so you can generally get the gist of what people are saying and communicate to them, so long as you're in a place with mesh access. It's only really a problem if you're, like, off the grid or else something weird is happening. Which, of course, as a game master, makes it a perfect excuse to have something weird happen and be like, Ooh, Google Translate is down! Gesticulate wildly! Everybody the, understands the universal language. Miming. <laughs> but yeah, so channel stuff, streaming. Alright, so... It's a new month. And I do have to apologize to fucking people about streaming because I did say I was going to do it more. And I tried. I put an honest effort in. But when you lose 16 hours of streaming, you get a little concerned because about what the fuck's going at, what's the fuck's going down. Yes. Um, yeah, I stream I streamed twice, um, once uh, 10 hours, another at six of Code Vein. Um, there's a lot of people viewing. They watched it. They can attest to it. But as I said, YouTube ate it up somewhere. Yeah, we're now, not, not sure about the exact details, but it did not get properly archived. When it should yeah, have been. So, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe it might be the capture software I'm using. It might be YouTube's side. I don't know. Um, in the meantime, I've been playing a variety of games on our Discord. Like I said, like um, like I mentioned last week, we went through all of um, Subnautica, even if I had to rage complete it with hacks last time. Um, recently, I've been playing um, Terraria, which Omega has, has uh, dr- kindly dropped in and hung out with me. He is the evil cactus man. I am the um, maw of uh, Demon King. It's good times. I Again, am cactus man. We're actually having a good time. Like, I don't know. I'm like actually going to see if Omega will play with me later because. Probably not. Uh, I'm super tired today. I don't know. I'm going to eat a sandwich and see how I feel. Okay. Um, uh, maybe I'll play Warframe or something. Well, no, no, no. You also you're talking about streaming. You did say maybe after today you would try fear, but I don't know how you feel. Yeah, I know. But that's like, that's like, I have to install that and stuff. And I'm just like. That's fair. Uh, it's, it's, well, it's not. It's not super late for you, but it is starting to get a little bit later in the day. Yeah, it's, it's 5 p.m. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's like it's 8 p.m. for you. It's 8 p.m. for me, but that means it might be 8 p.m. for other people in the audience. So I don't know. Mm, uh, I could get, I could start here, but like, uh, do I want to do YouTube? I should probably try through YouTube. If it's on my PC, 
Well, the thing is, the, my other concern is my random crashes. I don't know how that would treat a YouTube stream either. Would I have to like re completely reset? I think I'd have to like completely reset it up. Or actually, no, I think I crashed while streaming something else and it came back fast enough. I don't, I don't know. You, I don't YouTube know. is is a little weird. It has a little a little bit of effect. So I don't know. Well, I should I should at the minimum install Fear the first one because I do. And have, I mean, I have a, some of these things we won't know unless we try, right? Yeah. So. No, maybe I guess I will try and set it up and play some fear, and I will shit like, guys. I, I suppose that's a good thing because, like, honestly, it's cool that you're gonna play fear. Like, that's a series I've always wanted to get into, for instance. Mm. Um, and like maybe play myself, and it's got it's very on theme and stuff. It's also kind of old, and I don't think it's like super anticipated. So, if, yeah, I'm like I, I don't know. I don't if know. we experiment with some stuff and stuff goes wrong, it's probably not a huge loss. Like, honestly, I think the Code Vein stuff was, that sucked, because those were really, really long streams, and they were relevant, right? That was, yeah. uh, that was, uh, that was the hot thing, and still is a little bit. People still talking about Code Vein. Character creator's still really good, but anyway. So, like, if, if you want to go ahead and beta test and, and see if you can figure some shit out doing fear and see if that causes any problems, that's probably okay. I mean, I, can, I also have the Evil Within, which I, Evil Within, which I haven't beat. That could be on point. But, but, hey, what, whatever works for you. That's, that's mm -hmm. my thing. You, you, you take the effort to go out there and set up the streams and, you know, play for 10 hours and whatever. Holy shit. So, <laughs> like, I try to be hands off about that, but at the same time, you know, on the business end or just the tech end, just there's some stuff we don't, we don't learn unless we try. So, yeah. You, you uh, do whatever you want to do, but I would say go ahead and try something just for the sake of figuring it out. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. Well, I said, I'm also looking at this. I'm like, mm, evil with interfere. I'm like, I might, I might, um, Throw those out and see what people want. Hey, flashpole, flashpole. Also, people are going apeshit with the fucking Da Vinci sips. They love it a lot. It's you a, it's a, what? it's a very good emote, but people are all about it. Mm hmm. So let's see here. Yeah, so I'll, I'll probably do like a quick. I'll throw out a quick. Be like, hey, you guys, um, Evil Within or Fear? What do you want to see me play on YouTube? Do I want to do it on Twitter? I can do it on Twitter. Nah, I want, I need instant feedback. I'll do it on Discord. Instant feedback. Yeah. If oh. you, I'll like, that's the thing. If you want to, if you want to get, if you want to get in touch with us fast, but if we want to get in touch with our audience fast, we turn to Discord. It's yeah. like, hey, people. Like, maybe there's not a whole huge number of people here, but we've got a few active members, and hey, they, f they like us enough to get in our Discord, so it's usually a quick barometer on, like, stuff. Yeah. Let me see here. Want to see me? I'm gonna do it in our technical and feedback because that's when I oh. where I ask the big questions. It is for nice technical stream. technical things and feedback. Even within or F, I guess I have to put in acronyms or fear. Um, let's do a rabbit for fear. evil. E rabbit for evil within. Actually, hang on. Let me actually make sure it's the Fuck. rabbit. I only have Metal Gear Solid HD on PS3, don't I? I can't. Uh, that that uh, the the PS3 has native HD a uh, HTCP, so you have to like trick the capture card with like a or the, trick the PS4 with like a splitter or something. So I can't like play Metal Gear Solid and stuff. <laughs> well, I can play that one, but yeah, I'm maybe sorry, we'll, was... maybe we'll do that sometime when we're together. We'll 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 <laughs> finally beat Metal Gear Solid Five. The invincible, unbeatable forever game. Who All right, who dares? Who dares? It. Oh, God. It was Vesper. I saw that. All right, Vesper started it, but he took it back. But shame on you two, David, jumping in like that. <laughs> I saw. We saw everything. <laughs> Vesper's not even in here. <laughs> there's, there's been some running jokes about Vesper wanting to do uh... Mahjong. Well, I do like, here's the thing. Mahjong is actually pretty fun. And it's pretty simple to play. It's just really, really hard to score because yeah, you've talked about that. You you have problems figuring out the the final step in mahjong, the yeah. scoring parts. Yeah. And Vesper was like, you know, bro, I'll teach I'll teach you to ma ma those jongs. And I was just all like, you just want someone to play mahjong with? And he's like, yeah. Though that does remind me of another technical thing that I've also been, I I think we should need to go ahead and figure out and pull the trigger and do some beta tests on is tabletop simulator. Because we oh, talk yeah. about that all the time. And I've done some test recordings, and they seem okay. We need to just figure out how the best way to do that. Because we've talked about... Because, hey, we're... Me and Lucky are physically separate. All of our other friends are physically separate. You know, we, we're an internet friend group who got together to do internet things. 
So, hey, well, I, I can't mean, just, Mark like, lives like like half an hour away from me, but true. That's, that's just a funny coincidence. <laughs> it's hilarious how that worked out. Like you have physically met him before you physically met me, even though yeah. technically you hang out with me way more. Thanks, Internet. Yeah, because he's closer yeah. and it's really funny. Though, who knows? <laughs> I'll throw this out on the podcast just because it's funny. My my mother was like, oh, just does Lucky want to come for a vacation? I'm like, I don't know about that. I, I don't know if I'd want to subject him to living out here in the in the, in the the rurals. There's nothing to do here. I don't know. I could have fun. But I, well, I'm, I'm sure the you problem. would, but I don't know. I'm like, I wouldn't put that forward, but it's it just that was just a funny thing I thought of. Your mom your mom actually was all like, hey, bring him over. I was like, what? Yeah. Well, I don't know. They let, my, my parents like for me to have friends. It's, it's weird for them. I, I spend most of my time indoors. Yeah, I guess that's true. Oh, shit. Um, we are tied for Evil Within and Fear at six snakes and six rabbits. What the well, fuck? shit, I'm already one of those votes, so I can't break any ties. I'll give it a... I'll give it a... I'll give it to the end of our recording. If not, I'll do a tiebreaker, and I'll decide which we're gonna fucking play. Ha 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 ha. But yeah, so I we've been talking about um, Betrayal at House on the Hill, which is a really cool game. I've seen lots of people play. Um, mm-hmm. And there's a TTS mod for it, so we want to try that sometime. And I know Isn't some people X- have been excited for it, so... Isn't there, like, an X-Wings mini mod for TTS? There, there's, yeah, there's one for all the, the big Star Wars games. It's just I have to, I'd have to, like, figure out how to set those up. And See, I the need the thing is, is, like, I was kind of, I was interested in playing X-Wing. It's just that the thing we were using before, I was all like, I don't like this. Yeah, Vassal is what it's called, yeah. is another board game simulator. It's very flat, not very tactile. Yeah, yeah. TTS is like, ooh, you can actually move the models and stuff. Yeah, I'd I have know, to so double check because X-Wing got a whole new second edition since... I last tried to teach people to play it, so I'd have yeah. to, like, find the X-Wing 2. But, yeah, they have stuff for, like, Legion, Armada, etc. Those just take okay. a while. Um, but I mean, you do, we've been like, talking do about Betrayal for a long it, time. So. The what? We've been talking about Betrayal at a House on the Hill for a long time, and I know oh, people yeah, are excited to play it, so... Like, that's a good on-spooky theme. I've also seen another game um, that I, I want to try out, and uh, shout-out to... Uh, they're a YouTube channel and podcast I've followed for a long time, and it freaks me out a little bit that, that, not to brag, but technically our YouTube channel is bigger than theirs. They only have, like, 500 subs, we're at over 2K, and I'm just like, this is a weird feeling, because I've watched Drunk and Ugly for a long time. Um, The Drunk and Ugly is their YouTube channel. Uh, they, they've done some Let's Play type stuff, but now they lately they've been on a TTS kick of their own, and they introduced me through watching their videos to a game called Sentinels of the Multiverse, to okay. go back to our Supers conversation, which is a... It's its own comic book type setting, but it's a cooperative card game where there's an AI villain deck, and then, then all the players work together with their superhero decks to beat them. And there's also an environment deck, which is another AI deck which goes, which is kind of, depending on the environment, can be leaning towards villains, heroes, etc. Um, but it's oh. really interesting to play. I might forward you some videos of, of them playing it. All right. Also, Attack the David Arkham Horror is fun, but it's also a real big game with a lot of pieces, so... Mm. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, uh, it, Arkham Horror is cool, but it's it's big. It takes a long time. That's why they released, um, I think it, they called it Final Hour. Like, they literally made a short version of that game so you can play it in a short time. Like I don't mind me. Don't don't get me wrong. I like playing long games. I really no, do. But that's that's, the a, that's thing. another it's, thing. Like, uh, hey, I know that because I talked about uh, on streams anyway. I talked about Kingdom Death Monster, which is a super cool game in concept. It is literally Dark Souls Monster Hunter as a minis game with super pretty art, but it's a thing. It's like a it's yeah. a campaign based game in tabletop format. So it like yeah, no. I would not casually invite my friends to play it. Uh, even on TTS, because, like, holy shit, dudes, that would take a while. Uh, I I realized there was a TTS mod for it because Drunk and Ugly posted a video of them doing it. Um, uh, they called it Part 1, so it's their first play session. It's four hours long. It took them an <laughs> hour to beat the tutorial, because there's a tutorial fight, and it took them an hour. So it's like, mm, yeah, no. Like, I'm not just going to casually throw out, hey, friends, let's get together and play a couple of rounds of Kingdom Death Monster. No, that's not how that works. That's not like when we say, oh, shit, we're going to play Cards Against Humanity for, like, a couple hours, in which we'll probably get, like, three or four games in, right? Right. And who knows? Maybe we should, because I know there's a, there is a uh, CAH uh, TTS mod. Maybe we should we should commit one of those to video and experiment with that one first. I don't know. We'll figure some that's stuff a- out, but that's just yeah, channel stuff. Yeah, that sounds uh, that sounds low power. Like that's that's not it's it is low power because there's not a lot of like models and AI scripts mm-hmm. to to build, mm-hmm. and we all know how to play cards. 
it'll probably be demonetized as fuck, but it's an experiment, so whatever. That's how we do. And heck, if we wanted to be ad- advertiser friendly, we could play apples to apples instead. <laughs> I haven't played apples to apples in forever. No, but we played it on TTS. Uh, another thing I thought of was like uh, a game we have played, so I know that mod works is Munchkin, which is always oh, a lot yeah. of fun. Oh, I do love Tabletop uh, do Simulator love is a great system. Like, as just a a thing to let people recreate the tabletop experience. And shout out to TTS modders who make all this shit work. No, but I don't I don't know, because I don't, at least from my experience playing apples to apples, there's not a lot of swears. Like, you can get some funny matches up, but there's not, like, bigger blacker cock in it anywhere. Which is, like, <laughs> an AI robot will be like, well, you talking about big black cock? I'm like, whoa, it's for comedy purposes. Advertisers don't like that, no. Because c- cards get a is bad. We play not- we play cards with the community sometimes. It's bad, but My that's the point. Com- the point is, it's a game for horrible people. Yes, it is. And I'm, honestly, like, and I I've heard some people say they get tired of it because I can see that. Like, we like to play with um original cards or different mi- mixes and matchup packs. Because, mm. like, yes, if it's just like, haha, you said fuck, or haha, racism, like that can get old if you play it a lot with the same people over and over again. But still, it's I still find Cards Against Humanity to be entertaining because I don't play that often, and when we do, we usually we usually play with one of our fan decks like that that's on Cardcast. So, but yeah, okay, it's a fifteen. We talked about streaming and stuff, and other another channel plans. And yes, I have been busy this week, but hopefully, I will. I also felt a little under the weather at the start of the week, but I'm better now. So He's hopefully, I'll now. have time to start experimenting with streaming Soma. I've got a headset and everything; it's set up. And that's going to be sure. my big thing. That'll be to YouTube. That'll be nati- natively in PS4, just because I haven't done that in a while. And we'll see how that works out. Okay, well, uh, Lucky, do we have anything else to talk about? Uh, video game-wise, I really haven't been playing much on my PS4, because I did beat Covain. I got the best ending. Uh-huh. Apparently, there's multiple endings, and I'm going to feel like absolute garbage if I go and try and get those other ones. So I'm kind of like, eh. I mean, I that- kind of mentioned it earlier. Oh, well, I alluded to it, but... I've kind of I kind of put the brakes on Fire Emblem for now. I'm like my my desire to keep going is not overcome by my feeling like the gameplay right now is very samey. So yeah. I think maybe when the maybe when the the next batch of DLC comes out and there's more stuff to do, I'll pick it back up and finally blitz through the the last probably couple of chapters of Blue Lions. But I'm like I'm at a point where I'm like I don't I don't feel a, a pressing drive to see where this goes. It's like I kind of see where this is going. I played this game. I beat it once in a in a big blitz, so I think I'm kind of relaxed. I've been playing a little bit of Borderlands Three, not a, not a lot yet, but a decent amount. Um, it's all right. Mechanics are really good. I like some of the new systems. Clambering's great. Sliding's great. Uh, I'm playing a Siren, obviously, because that's what I have always played forever. Ever. Um, I've seen people playing it. It looks good. Yeah, it's kind of, it's fun, and um, Amara's got the classic Siren like self sustaining setup. Like one of her first tier skills is health regen. And because I do play Borderlands a lot solo, like, I've played with other people, but I also like to just quietly play it by myself, too. I like that kind of setup where you can be self-sustaining. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel like it has the problem all Borderlands games have, where it's just like, okay, you get five minutes of the game, here's the plot, here's five side quests. And you're like, these side quests are going to be really boring if I do them later. I'll do them now. But whatever. It's got some fun guns. I like a lot of the new systems. The new... I know it took them a long time to add, but the new alt fire thing is cool. Like... Oh, yeah. Almost everything can now switch between at least like burst or semi or semi and auto or burst and full auto kind of thing. Uh, and then some of them have weirder stuff. Like I picked up a gun that had a under barrel taser, so it would use up a little bit of your pistol ammo to do a uh, shock type damage, obviously, that would like chain lightning to other people, but was also just a regular ass gun, also, which I like because. Sometimes there are, like, really weird niche guns you get in Borderlands that you're like, this is cool, but I'm never going to use this because it's too weird. Like, you'll get rocket launchers that do weird things or other stuff, and you're like, why would I use this? But when it's like, oh, it's also just a gun, that's great. Mm-hmm. Haven't found any walking guns yet. Have you found any guns that talk? No, I don't think I'm that far. That's, like, that's always been, like, one of my favorite things about Borderlands, silly enough, is, like, guns that, like, talk at you when you, like, shoot them or reload them. Yeah, those the are from- pretty funny. I'm, I'm sure we'll get to some points yet. I haven't met a lot of people. I like, I just, I barely met Ellie. They did improve vehicles um, and give you a reason to use them. Now they have, like, multiple parts. So, like, if oh. you hijack a bandit vehicle that has a cool part, you can take it back to be analyzed and unlock more options, which is always cool. Oh. 
Oh, that's neat. Um, like the, just the fact that every character has three different versions of their active skill is good. Like I picked the AOE slam as my first one for Amara because the others were kind of they kind of reminded me too much of the earlier sirens. Like one of them is literally she grabs somebody, and I'm like, that is just Maya, guys. But because she has three, it works. So I'm like, I'm going to be playing this run solo mostly for the start. So I feel like it, it's appropriate to do the big AoE slam. That's going to be my get out of trouble button. And it is. It's great. The humor is pretty on point. There's a lot more incidental dialogue. Like, two kind of started that, but three is definitely whole hog with like, there are moments when your player character will throw out a line and then the other guy, the uh, other NPC won't change what they were going to say at all. But it, it gives your character flavor. You yeah. know, because it like what the effect of what people say will always be the same, but the way they say it is different, at least. Mm -hmm. um, there is a new thing that I've noticed, at least on some guns now, is there are uh, they talked about this in the pre-roll, but I have picked up a few guns that have shields, which are fun. Oh, interesting. Yeah, you if you aim down sights, the gun, gun pops a little shield that has a little bit of strength. And I'm like, oh, it's a little cool extra defense. It's I mean, it's Borderlands. That's what it is. It's Borderlands, but it's got more shit in it. That's what you want out of Borderlands, right? Yeah. The writing is still pretty funny. I, like, you know, some people probably find some of the writing cringy, but I haven't really, like, some people was like, man, Tiny Tina's annoying. I'm like, no, Tiny Tina's hilarious. That's Tiny Tina, excuse you. I'm like, okay, I get that people are like, don't, you, like, you think it's just, oh, a little so random, but I don't, I don't know. Tina never really quite came across that. Like, there is a very much a method to her madness. She just had a very idiosyncratic way of speaking, and I can see how that gets on some people's nerves. But uh, I, I mean, like, did, did you did you not like anyone not play the fucking Borderlands Two like um, Tiny Tina's uh, expansion? I love that DLC, but yeah. also but that's because we play RPGs. So I was like, well, yeah. I understand these references. Well, as I said, like that's like like after playing that, I think I got a better handle on Tiny Tina's character. But yeah, I can kind of see like it helps her grow her voice, which is good. Yeah. I haven't run in, run into her yet in this version, so we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Ellie's still good. She's still funny. Though I, I'm thinking like, I'm like, I don't know if it's because my character model is taller or what, but I'm like, did, girl, did you get shorter? I remember you being taller. Uh, she's still a big girl, but it's, it's funny because I'm like, I think my model, I think Amara's taller, which would make sense. She talks about working out a lot. Abs uh, for days, yo. You know, uh, Claptrap is still Claptrap even though they couldn't get the same voice actor because of the weird, complicated, uh, gearbox stuff. Though uh, apparently that suit against Randy Pritchford was dismissed, so the judge said there was there was no merit. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, so there 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 is a little bit less confusion, but yeah, it's a whole thing. And I think they clarified why Troy Baker didn't return to his role. It was union stuff. Yeah, that's that's solid. Like that's that's a shame, but that is a it's a weird divide in the video game world that we're not going to get into because I'm sleepy and haven't collected my thoughts, but. Yeah, it is a it, it is a big deal choice to make, right? Because yeah. actors are obviously a big part of a lot of these games, um, especially these days. Like, like games Troy Baker is big for, like Naughty Dog type stuff, where they're doing like the whole thing, performance capture and everything. Like that's a big deal, but also there's a lot of requirements when you go union that can be hard for some dev companies to figure out, especially if you haven't been doing that way before. Yeah, like if you've just been hiring hiring internals. And some people will be like, oh, you're exploiting your employees. And it's like, you could do that, but sometimes it's not. It's just like, instead of working, you know, eight hours in the programming bin today, eight hours you le left your cube and went to the booth to record. Yeah. You know, you, it might not be your technical job description some of these times, but you're still getting paid for your job, I guess. So it's, it's weird. And, and honestly, that is a whole thing, right? Because some of those people wouldn't get those opportunities to voice act if you went full union because then those guys are scabs. And, or they'd have to like, just join the union and be like, but that's a really whole complex thing. So it's yeah, it's it's a big rigmarole for video games. So it's like that's sad, but I understand why. Because I I do think that a decent number of Gearbox is acting like um Claptrap uh was it David Eddings? Yep, he was internal. Um, and the reason why he didn't return was that they he says that they weren't gonna pay him enough. But they say that they offered him the what they called the fair rate for an external because he was no longer working at the company. So I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know. that's a, without details of how much money the pay scale is. I can't comment on that at all. It's a real big nope. he said, she said. But they couldn't come to an agreement about the pay not since he left the company. So he didn't return. 
Yeah. But he was internal, and I think a lot of other people were internal. And also, oddly enough, I talking, you know, we talked about Funimation before. I I believe Gearbox is based in Texas, so um some of the people oh. who are in Borderlands are also Funimation people, because Funim- Funimation is in Texas. It's funny how that works out. And it's all networking. Yep. Um What's our mission clock at? Uh, two sixteen. It's a decent sized episode. It's bigger than the episode of Let's Talk FGO we released this week. Uh, there was a news. Sto- uh, there was a news story that I noticed over the past week. Um, of the uh, writing guild. I can't remember the last acronym. Oh yeah, the the writer, the writers guild association or something was it WGA? I don't know. There was yeah, a I know. yeah. I remember that story. They um, they decided to pull game writing. Yeah, as an and award. I'll. Yeah, and actually, um, there was actually a, a, I won't say it was a big kerfuffle, but there was definitely some, um, some game devs were all like, um, how very dare. After they, well, yeah, because they gave games like Last of Us and God of War this award beforehand, which is obviously well merited. So it's kind of like, yeah, yo, dude, what WTF? Uh, yeah. our, our community had a more complex discussion, but that was a while ago. And so I don't remember it off the top of my head. Yeah. I think the general consensus was it was like, it's almost kind of like the voice acting unions thing where it's like, the the traditional engine of of like TV and movie writing, uh, sometimes doesn't like how video games like bust into the scene, and they do things differently. Like- but also, that does mean that video game devs don't always quote unquote play ball. You know, like they don't yeah. necessarily handle things like how you would in a traditional studio setup. So I think they it was kind of like okay, you guys don't do things the way we do, which is how we do business, so we're going to stop giving you free publicity, basically. Yeah, and the video games are kind of like, well, guess what? We don't fucking need you guys. And they're like, well, God of War was one of the best-selling games of all time without you because our story was good, so we'll just keep winning on our own merits, I guess. Bye. Yeah. Which, that's that's kind of the weird thing, right? Like, a, a lot of the oldster entertainment industry won't legitimize video games. Mm-hmm. Well, like that's that's why I think it's such a big deal that Kojima's doing what he does. Well, yeah. that's the thing. That's a, that's a Kojima thing. Kojima likes movies, and I think he wants to make games with movie people. Well, yeah, well, like like we've mentioned this before. It's like using like actual celebrities in game is nothing new, but it hasn't been done to the extent that, like, especially in marketing. No, that Kojima Ko- is advertising his game like it was a TV or movie series, where he's like, "Yeah, this character is played by this person." Um, special appearance spot. Which, honestly, that's a good way to market it because everybody knows Death Stranding is going to be weird because it's Kojima. It's like, this this story is going to be weird and fucking incomprehensible and there's going to be like a, a literal two-hour cutscene explaining it all at the end. <laughs> so that doesn't matter. Everybody should know by now what the Kojima style is. He made Five Metal Gear Solids, Two Zone of the Enders, he made Police Knots and Snatcher, uh, and some other stuff too in there somewhere. I... Mm. I think that's most of his library, but there might be a couple. Yeah, of no, I'm not trying to think. Just, he's probably made some other weird stuff, but yeah, like Police Not the Snatcher was like his first work. Then he went into Metal Gear One and Two. Snatcher, by the way, is a trip. Um, yeah, if you can, yeah. if, if you've never seen it, audience, or watch somebody see it, it's uh, ooh, first of all, very Kojima, but also, wow, I love it a lot. This is oh man, it's, <laughs> it's a it's a goofy game, but also like, it's very it's literally cyberpunk, so like it's very Blade Runner inspired. Have we mentioned how much Kojima likes movies? But also the soundtrack for Snatcher is great. Kojima knows how to pick how to pick music people. But yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like people know what Kojima's idiosyncratic style is. He is one of the few creatives in games who can really stand on his own as his own brand. Like literally, that's what he did. Kojima was all like, um, fuck you, Kojima. It was like Kojima was like, no, fuck you. I'm gonna go do my own thing. Well, and yeah, game- and now he was for <laughs> Five, he was already a sub studio, but now he's like, now nah, I'm truly, a, I'm a truly an independent studio, technically. Like Sony bankrolled him, but th- as far as I know, they don't necessarily own Kojima Productions. He's just no. I'm my own company now. Yeah, and because you know, like remember Kojima, like when he left Kojima, he just went on a tour of game devs, and all the studios were right. like, "Yes, Kojima, come see our shit. Let us talk shop." Yeah, and Look while he did, he ended up working closely with Gorilla, who is a studio that Sony owns. I think that was just because Sony was like, "Hey Kojima, you want to make a you, you want to make a weird game, right? You want that you want that kid from uh from Walking Dead, right?" And Kojima was like, "Hi," and Sony was <laughs> like, "All right, uh, here are our worldwide studio arms. Here is a check, and uh, just make sure we get exclusive rights to that shit." And he was like, "Okay," and then Death Stranding happened, like a beautiful like a beautiful bridge baby. It came together. 
Actually, did you ever watch the Tokyo Game Show trailer of like all the gameplay and stuff? Uh, no, I don't think I ever got around to it. I'm just, I'm like, I'm just there. Whatever it is, whatever this game is. Yeah, I'm no, there. no, it's like, like, no, like, like I said, like, I'm same way. But the more I actually do see of the gameplay, I'm like, like, oh my god, this actually is going to be an amazing, fucking, amazing, fucking adventure across America. And it's so soon. It's like a month away. It's less than a month. Oh god, I actually need to put in my pre order now that I think about it. I probably should. Fit, I probably think about that too. Blocking uh, the pre order, like we said, we want to get that day one delivery. I don't know, like as I said, like, I don't know, maybe I'll put, like, start streaming it live, I don't know, people are ready to see me fucking walk, I guess. Yeah, I don't know, because, because, because we don't know how the game works start to finish, and also it's gonna have a lot of cutscenes, I don't know, sometimes Sony is weird about that, so I don't, I don't know how that will work with streaming, uh, so we'll see, we'll see how that shakes out, but we, we want to say we want to be there day one, we were talking about video game writers originally, but I think this works, because it's like, Kojima is a unique experience in that, he stands alone on his own brand, and obviously, you know, that whole thing, but also, he really wants to work with movies and TV guys. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't know how much other video game devs feel about that. Like, on the one hand, some of those adaptations could be money, but also, I feel like video games are closer to the nerd pulse. So, like, they would be able to understand, like, even if they're not necessarily watching anime, they would understand that maybe their fans, like, do that, and they would look at something like the Netflix live action Death Note and be like, oh, wow, people really don't like that. Maybe we shouldn't work with these people because our fans won't like the end product. It'll be weird, even if it makes us money, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I I don't know. It's 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 a weird give and take. And I know that sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Um, Like Assassin's Creed was a recent attempt to build a movie that people didn't necessarily like. I never saw it, but I wasn't a, I haven't been a big Assassin's Creed guy. So I was like, yeah, yeah. whatever. It's like, hey, thanks, bye. But yeah, it's 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 a whole thing, and I do think some of it is just old media is as always trying to like, because that that's what always happens. Whatever's the old thing tries to like control or supervise or dictate the new thing, and they've been doing that for years. So I if video games are a legit thing. Like I don't know when when Roger Ebert was like, video games aren't art. I was like, fuck you, old man. <laughs> Like, well, hey, what's what's the Malcolm in the Middle um, quote? God damn, where is it? I don't remember. You, you look it up, but I'll, I'm gonna look it up. But it's like, like I I respect that that guy knew a lot about cinema. He had good opinions about TV and cinema and stuff, but he just didn't get games, and a lot of people didn't. A lot of people because games revolutionized over a short period of time. Like within 50 years, we've gone from Pong to Last of Us. Right. I don't even want to say like 50 years like video games like really got their upswell like uh, early 80s. I want to say. Yeah. Like, but when uh, I on the okay, so it's 20. It's almost 2020. Yeah. So minus 20 years to get to 2000. So, yeah, I think Pong was the 70s. Oh, OK. Yeah, no, that is 50 years. OK. Yeah, we're, we're at about the 50, the 50 year mark. So it's it's within a half under a half century. We have w drastically radically improved and like. While TV and movies have improved a lot, I don't know if they have had quite a crazy high jump. Yeah, Pong was 72, so. Okay. In tw in 2022, 20, uh, oh, we'll be in the full-blown 50 years. But yeah, like, video games do jump a lot. The future is now, old man. Yes. <laughs> Appropriate. Like, <laughs> video games have had such a drastic revolution with tech. And movies have too, but... At the same time, movies have always been in that space where they could capture your imagination, right? Like, mm -hmm. the original Star Wars was really good, and it did a lot of revolutionary effect stuff. And, like, well, yes, obviously, you can do even more crazy bullshit effect stuff, both practical and not. Um, it's, it's still, you know, like, ah, it's still a movie. Whatever. But mm -hmm. video games, you can really watch the progression from, uh, because, like, well, I don't know. There have been movies with bad effects always, but... Like, you can watch the progression of, like, the literal progression. You can look at the old-ass PlayStation 1 Final Fantasy VII models, those blocky polygons. And then you can look at everybody's glow-ups in the remake, which is, uh, what, we're coming up on 20 years later? No, we're over oh, 20. A little bit more. We're over 20. That's right, we're over 20. It's going to be closer uh, to 25 by the time it finishes. Rip. Oh, uh, no, I think, let's see, I think it was in uh, 97 it was released. Yeah, it was 97. So that would be, um... 2017 was the was the 20 year mark so it's going to release in 2020 next year right? so yeah next year 2020 so yeah. it'll be uh approximately the uh the it'll be like 23 years i think 
Yeah, math. But yeah, I'm, but I'm saying by the time they finish all, th- all the parts, it may be 25 years. But still, you can see the radical difference, right? You can look at what that game looked like 20 years ago and what that game looks like now and be like, holy shit, my mind is blown. <laughs> like, honestly, I don't... Maybe it's because he did the special editions, but thinking about it, I don't remember that, like, say, there's that gap between, say, the prequel, the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy in Star Wars. I don't know if they really look that different. Like... The aesthetic design was a lot more futuristic in the pre- prequel trilogy, but I don't know if the tech was really that much more advanced, right? And now if you look at, like, the special editions or some of the, the prequel trilogy CG, it looks awful. But that's because mm-hmm. George Lucas was literally pioneering the field, kids. Like, I don't know. Like, you you can call some shots on him for, like, adding in his, his conspicuous CG or whatever, but he... G- GL literally made some technology with some of this shit. Like, there's a reason why... Industrial Light and Magic and Skywalker Sound or whatever are big names in the movie industry now because Lucas was like, I need you to do a thing for me. And they did it. Uh, but yeah, so I don't know. Video games are definitely art. And but they're they're different art from movies and TV. So maybe people who are in one world don't necessarily, you know, get the other world. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, that can be vice versa, right? Like, I'm sure there are a lot of people who. Well, heck, no, it's an art form. That's why Telltale Games was always thought to be so good, I think, is because they were able to take brands primarily... They took a couple of brands that were associated with, like, TV and stuff and viably turned them into interactive games. Oh, yeah. Which, well, which, like, which that's, can be that's hard, because that's, that's the other thing, right? Like, uh, there have been there have been shitty video game movies. There have been a lot of shitty uh, movie video games, too. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. Actually, that's something I actually never really understand. What was the what, what happened to the what, what the fall of Telltale Games? I actually never uh, learned what so that was. So the really short version, I think, is just they their mouth wrote a check they couldn't cash. Uh, I think uh. basically they ran out of money. They they spent way more than they were taking in in their studio and trying to pretend like nothing was wrong. And then it was like, no shit's really wrong. You're going to go fucking bankrupt. And they're like, well shit, we're going to go fucking bankrupt. Oh yeah! Wow, I'm looking. I did a quick chance. Everyone's all like the rise and fall of Telltale Games. I'm all like, how dramatic? Well, it was like they were fine. <laughs> Telltale was great. They were releasing series. They'd really pioneered this episodic format. Their games were good. And then suddenly it was like, uh, BG Dubs, we are out of money. Everybody is laid off, and uh, all our games are canceled. Bye. Bye. And you're just like, what? What? You know, it's 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 like if it's like if a major movie studio. Like, like, um, who was, who's behind Lord of the Rings? Like, if, if New Line Cinema was, like, in the middle of, like, The Hobbit and, and was like, uh, so actually we've spent all our budget and everybody is fired and the last two movies are not coming out. You'd be like, how did this happen? You were riding high on other big franchises. I don't understand. And I still don't know the details of, like, how they spent all their money, but they did. Um, but yeah. It's, like I said, it's a really interesting how things don't always translate, you know? Like, we Mm -hmm. talk about this with anime a lot. Some stuff doesn't just translate over mediums or lines. You know, anime adaptations of mangas or video games don't always come out okay. And sometimes they come out really good. Like, we talked about that a lot yesterday, talking about the first episode of Babylonia, where it was like, wow, this is very much paced and feels like the game without literally being as tedious as the game is sometimes. And Ale's another good example. It it really shows the feel of all these girls shooting stuff endlessly without necessarily, like I said, being as bogged down because it's... Enterprise doesn't have to fight, like, four scrub fleets to get to fighting <laughs> Zuikaku. She just shows up. She's dire. Clearly, the anime is in clearing mode. <laughs> Obviously. All right. But we're at two and a half hours, and I really need to, like, make myself a sandwich or something, so. Yeah, no, it's good. I just, like. No, you brought up a good topic, but we don't, we don't want to go too deep on, like, psychoanalyzing every aspect of that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we aren't prepared for it. And we we have learned our lesson. We are trying to be good about learning about stuff before we talk about it. Or at least blatantly admitting we have no idea what the fuck we're saying. I have no problem admitting that. Uh, well, I mean, I thought in general that caveat was known with us, but I guess we've done shows. And especially with Let's Talk FGO, it's very informatic centered. We sound like we know what we're talking about, even though we really don't. <laughs> so oh, sometimes we need to reiterate that disclaimer. We don't know. What are words? What are we even? What are we even? Oh, uh, well, yeah, that uh, seems like a good a good place to, to end up. A deep philosophical note. What are we even? I'm getting a little dry. Get a little dry here. Um, 
So I'll go ahead and say, hey, if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to give us a like. If you like this video, if you have any comments, leave them in the comments down below. What are you even? Let us know. You can also Why join us in the even? Discord. That link's in our description and on our YouTube channel. It's a great way to get in contact with us fast. Get invited to impromptu polls. Hey, before we uh, round this episode and go any further, how's that uh, How's that thing looking out? Uh, looks like uh, we're at nine for fear, eight for evil within, and fear has just finished installing. Alrighty. Uh, so, hey, if you want to see that kind of stuff from us or any other videos we do, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can always see what we're doing. And make sure to hit that bell for notifications, even if you're already subscribed, so you always know when we do something like go live. I don't know. As a hypothetical. Go live! And, of course, like I said at the front of the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to those early in audio format downloadable for as little as a dollar a month. It's really soon. And it helps us out directly. You can also just support us by watching. Uh, you can consider super chatting on our streams, donating to us directly, or buying our merch. But uh, Patreon's a really good way to help out, and you get goodies for it. Booyah. All right, this has been What's Up. So we'll see you next week for more What's Up. And uh, we've already released an app. Well, okay. By the time you're hearing this live anywhere, we've already released our episode of Let's Talk FGO, so I'm not lying, technically, but Let's Talk FGO should be already out by the time this goes fully live in public and all that good stuff, and uh, we'll be recording another one of those episodes, and uh, look for streams, maybe some other weird shit, I don't know, we'll, we love stuff. We honestly love doing this, that's why we keep doing it. Yeah. And with that, I think we're going to get out of here. Lucky out to get spooked.